Fans, a pleasant good afternoon to you. We welcome you inside the broadcast booth at Trailblazer Stadium. It's time for college football on a beautiful Saturday afternoon in St. George, Utah. I'm Carrick Segmiller, the voice of the Trailblazers, with you here on ESPN Radio 97.7 FM, also live on the Dixie State Stretch Internet Portal and CEC TV, TDS Cable Channel 108 locally in St. George, Utah. A little bit later in the day, uh, in the broadcast, when we actually hop on and, and this game is kicked off and underway, we will also welcome in our friends from Grand Junction on KTMM 1340 AM in Grand Junction. Their radio crew not able to make the trip this week. So uh, we will be on the call for not only our audience here, but in Grand Junction as well. And we are excited to have that extended audience today. Again, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Carrick Segmiller, and joining me in the broadcast booth this week is Andy Thompson and Drayson Ball, the three-man crew. Always love having all three of us up in the booth. These guys with lots of good stuff to say. They know what they're talking about, and it is time to start breaking down this matchup between Dixie State, the Trailblazers hosting the Mavericks of Colorado Mesa University. You could say that this is a rivalry matchup. These two teams in the NCAA Division II era, era have met 10 times previous to this. It was before, well before the two teams were in the same conference, and this rivalry extends back to the junior college days, back when it was Dixie College and Mesa State College as well. These two teams know each other very well, although a new coaching staff for Dixie State. Uh, anytime Dixie State and Colorado Mesa get together, you can expect a battle regardless of the venue. Again, this is the TDS pregame show. We welcome you inside the booth as we break this thing down and set up the matchup for you. Dixie State, 6-2 and two overall, 5-2 and two in the RMAC. Colorado Mesa, 4-4 four and four overall, 4-3 four and three in the RMAC. It's a beautiful day outside, right around 60 degrees right now. And, and by the th time this thing is over, we'll be probably pushing 70 degrees. The cold front that has settled in St. George this week has moved through, and we're back to regular uh, fall and October temperatures. Again, Carrick Segmiller alongside Andy Thompson and Drayson Ball today. Let's set this thing up. Uh, Andy, let's start with you. Uh, obviously, Dixie State 6-2 and two overall. I uh, had the setback last week. You, you know, you're thinking uh, before the setback to Shadron State last week, and if Dixie State can keep winning and, and possibly win out, you're looking at a possible share of the RMAC championship. You're looking at possibly uh, either an auto bid or an at-large berth to the D2 playoffs for the first time. That loss obviously uh, really sets back the RMAC championship hopes and then maybe even further back uh, the, the D2 playoffs hopes. Not totally uh, buried, but... Uh, those hopes are, are dashed or diminished for the most part, but still, Andy, a lot at stake as this Dixie State team tries to, to put forth its best effort and tries to still come up with its best season in the D2 era with still eight or nine wins possible on the table. Absolutely, with three games left. I think last week caught off guard a little bit, homecoming against Shatteron State. Some weird stuff happening in that game. Dixie State wasn't able to put a lot of pressure on Shatteron. They usually are in the in the defensive backfield. Some guys got lost. It was kind of a funky game. Obviously, Willstead only played a very little bit of the first quarter, the starting quarterback. So it was a strange game, but I think a wake-up call, and I think Coach Peterson has used it just as that, a wake-up call for Dixie State coming into this game against, as you brought up, a pretty big rival against uh, Colorado Mesa. Drayson, before we, we jump into breaking each team down really in depth, let's take a look at the tail of the tape and take us through those numbers, uh, Drayson, and for you TV and Internet viewers, you can follow along with the graphic as well. But these are two teams that, that on paper, just like last week, uh, you know, fairly even. Dixie State does lead in, in a few of those areas. But take us through the tail of the tape and how these two teams match up, Drayson. Yeah, Colorado Mesa, you know, a good opponent coming in. And, and one of the things that we talked about last week with Shadron State is, is don't let the record fool you. They're a much better team than their record shows coming in averaging 35 points per game offensively total offense is right up there on over 470 yards of total offense 172 yards per game on the ground and 298 yards through the air 43 and 11 and 111 on third down conversions they are however minus five in the turnover battle they uh they, they've thrown 10 interceptions on the season and they fumbled the ball 12 times. So uh, they do. They are prone a little bit to turn the football over if the Trailblazers can capitalize on that, especially those fumbles. Anytime you have 12 fumbles at this point in the season, uh, you are obviously you know prone to turn the football over, and the Trailblazers need to be able to capitalize on that in this game. For the Trailblazers, averaging just under 
35 points per game with their total offense numbers strong at over 435 yards per game. 145 on the ground and 290 through the air, like we mentioned on third down conversions, have been a little bit better uh, in the last couple of weeks. 49 and 118, that's 42 percent on third downs. And then, of course, their turnover margin, they're even right now. So if the Trailblazers want to get that turnover margin into the positive numbers, if they can get one or two of those today, should be make out for a good game. Well, and Andy, let's talk about those turnovers for just a minute, and that's our tail of the tape uh, here inside the TDS pregame show. But let's talk about those turnovers. This was the Dixie State team that was forcing turnovers at a high rate early yeah. on, getting lots of interceptions, and then it went a couple of games without some turnovers. And last week, fumbled a, uh, forced a fumble late against Shadron State. They were not able to do anything with that extra possession. Uh, in a game like this, it seems so critical to be able to force turnovers, and, and a little bit later, we'll have some quality in keys to the game. But Andy, I, I think and this isn't necessarily on our keys to the game because it's that way every week. But in a game like this, I think Dixie State going to have to force some turnovers and make some things happen that way, take advantage of this uh, lopsided turnover margin between the two teams. Yeah, and, and that's kind of been their calling card over the past few years. Dixie State has really prided themselves at putting pressure on the quarterback and having a reliable defensive secondary who a lot of the time plays man coverage and, and is aggressive, takes risks, and gets those interceptions. But that, that all starts up front with the pressure, and that's something that they missed obviously uh, last week against Shadron State. They're one of the best in the conference. They got Dylan Hendrickson, who's one of the best in the whole country at getting to the quarterback, and that's where it starts today is bothering him in the pocket and allowing your defensive backs to make plays. Let's take a look at the series history between these two teams. We mentioned this will be the 11th all-time meeting in the NCAA Division II era from 2006 on. And uh, Colorado Mesa holding an 8-2 to two series lead, and this is how that's happened. Mavericks claimed a 42-14 victory in the inaugural matchup on August 24, 2006 in Grand Junction. Dixie State bounced back in the very next matchup later that uh, season with a 21-6 win here in St. George on October 7th. After that, Colorado Mesa countered with five consecutive wins in the series before Dixie State shocked the then-ranked number 23 Mavericks in 2016. Everyone remembers that game. That was Dixie State's first win over a ranked opponent, and they did it 38-31 at Stoker Stadium. There in Grand Junction was their first win in Grand Junction over the Mavericks. Since then, Colorado Mesa has won the last two matchups, uh, a game that was close going into the fourth quarter last year that I think if you asked anyone who played in that game, they felt like it got away from Dixie State. Interesting to note, uh, Dixie State has won one game in Grand Junction and just one game here in St. George in those matchups. Five matchups in Grand Junction, five matchups in St. George. The Trailblazers will try to earn their second win in St. George in this series between Dixie State and Colorado Mesa. Let's look at the Mavericks a little bit closer, Drayson. We can look back. Why don't we recap their season and give us a, you know, a few key stats, some things that uh, are key to Colorado Mesa and the things that they've been able to do so far this season. Yeah, Mesa 4-4 four and four overall in the season, 4-3 and three coming into this game. They have losses to uh, – a CSU Pueblo, a Colorado School of Mines, a Western Colorado, and then they lost uh, a non-conference game to uh, Eastern New Mexico uh, University that was in the, from the Lone Star Conference. So the four and four coming into the season overall, and then like I mentioned, four and three in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. A team that comes in that, like you mentioned, has had the edge on Dixie State uh, over uh, the past uh, few games uh, over the course of the series. Uh, but they come in. I mean, this is one of the big rivalry games that you love to see each and every year between the Trailblazers and Colorado Mesa. You know, I expect a lot of uh, – you know, fierce com competition today. I, I expect the Trailblazers last week, you know, they saw they came out a little bit flat, I think, maybe after that first touchdown, the 69 yard uh, CJ Luongo touchdown run. I think they maybe lightened up a little bit or were just a little bit flat throughout this game. I don't think you're going to see that out of the, the Trailblazers today. I think. They know who's coming in. They know this is a big rivalry game. I think they're going to be able to come out a little bit sharper, a little bit crisper, and with a little bit more hunger against the uh, rank or against a rivalry game. Let's talk about some key players for Colorado Mesa and Drayson. We'll keep it with you, and then we'll move back to you, Andy. Uh, let's start on the offense first, Drayson. Obviously, th this is a Colorado Mesa team that averages more passing yards per game than rush yards. But as, as you and I talked on the show on Trailblazer Weekly uh, earlier in the week, and we've had conversations and, and, and just talked about this thing, it's a Colorado Mesa team with actually more rushing attempts per game than passing attempts. And they like to try to set up the pass with the run. But let's start with their pass game. Obviously listed to get the start today is uh, the redshirt sophomore Hayden Bollinger. And uh, he's got a great arm. And he's got some talented receivers to throw to, starting with Peter Anderson. Yeah, Hayden, Hayden Bollinger, he, he is a big guy, 6'4", 230 pounds. He's comparable in size to Chase Hess, Dixie State's tight end. He, he is good. He's 48 of 113 this season, 
42% completion percentage, 850 yards, five touchdowns, five interceptions. He has been known a little bit to, to throw the ball into some trouble, but like you mentioned, like you see here, he's got a great arm. He can throw the ball to all parts of the field. He can use his feet to create plays, to extend plays. He can run a little bit. Uh, he's not the, the fastest of foot, but you see here, a tremendous arm. He can put the ball in the money when he needs to, and he's got a lot of weapons to throw through. Once again, you see the, the deep ball there to Peter Anderson. He's going to be another key player for uh, Mesa in this game. The Trailblazers are going to have to know where he is at all at all times. Peter Anderson is one of the best receivers in this conference, if not the fastest receiver in the conference. So a lot of weapons for Hayden Bollinger. Um, he's a big guy, like I mentioned. He's tough to bring down. You cannot arm tackle this kid. He's got a good arm. He can make all the throws, like I mentioned. I said, he's about the size of Chase Hess. He's about a little bit bigger than our than our tight end, Chase Hess. He's a thick guy. He reminds me a little bit of Andrew Luck, just the way that he's kind of built his body style. He's a very thick guy, like I mentioned, quick on his feet and can avoid tacklers, and he's tough to bring down. That is your run game for, for Colorado Mesa. But like we mentioned, it's the – or excuse me, that's the pass game. And like we mentioned, though, they'll, they'll try to set this uh, this passing attack up with the run. More rushing attempts for Colorado Mesa on the season than passing attempts. And it's a three-headed monster in the rushing attempt, in the rushing game. Of course, you TV and Internet viewers right now, you're getting a look at Isaac Mestis. 111 carries, 565 yards, six touchdowns. He can do it all. He can, he, he's can. he got power. He can bruise when he wants, but he's also got finesse. He can find the hole. He'll bounce it outside, and he will make you pay if you make any mistakes. He's also the Mavericks punt returner and the punter. So how often do you see that? <laughs> the same guy. He's running back. He's the punter and the punt returner. So he'll, he'll put his head down. He'll run you over, but also he'll kill you with finesse and make you miss and spin away from you as well. Uh, he's got the bulk of the carries right now for Colorado Mesa, but uh, don't be surprised to see a lot of Jesse Rodriguez and Trey Windham, uh, a kind of a three-headed monster in that rushing attack. That's how they'll try to beat you offensively. Andy, let's go over to you and look at, at defensively. Obviously, Dixie State has a sack master of, of, of its own and Dylan Hendrickson, nine and a half sacks this season. However, he is being matched by senior defensive end Mason yeah. Newton for, of this Colorado Mesa team. He's got 56 tackles and uh, nine and a half sacks as well. So he and Hendrickson lead the Armac in sacks. This is a Colorado Mesa team that will, they can break through. They've got 25 sacks on the season, only a few less than Dixie State. If you're not careful, if this offensive line of the Trailblazers is not on their game, then Cody will said it's going to have some trouble like we've seen the last few weeks. Yeah, Mason Newton is a one-man wrecking crew, has 18 tackles for loss this year. He played at Woods Cross high up in Bountiful, Utah. Good get by Colorado Mesa, but he has been a monster. You probably expect Dixie State to option him a lot, make him the guy they're reading on their on their zone run plays because if if somebody's blocking him he's going to get through and wreak havoc especially from the backside and that's a, a key to the game I think for Mesa is getting Cody Willstead running and that's what Mesa Newton does so well of course Colorado Mesa is allowing 34 points and 423 yards of total offense per game including 216 yards through the air. So Dixie State will look to try to exploit uh, some of those. However, uh, Colorado Mesa, Andy, has uh, some talented defensive backs, including uh, Nick Sissio. He is a redshirt sophomore from Castle Pines, Colorado. And you want to talk about guys that are tied with the Dixie State player for the for the conference lead. Nick Sissio currently tied with Aaron Simpson for an RMAC best five uh, picks. So it, it, it's a team that you can pass against them. But if you miss, you make a mistake, they'll make you pay with, make you pay with an interception. Absolutely. Well. Sissio has been super reliable in the secondary this year. Darian Turner is back this year. He had to redshirt all last season. Two years ago, he was one of their best players on defense, was one of their top tacklers. He's picked up right where he left off this season. I think he's third in tackles from the free safety position. He's a ball hawk and comes up in the run game and sticks people. So it's great for the Mavericks to have him back. He's been awesome. That is Colorado Mesa uh, defensively. Uh, special teams, you're going to see the, the kicker, Lucas Ruiz Diaz. Uh, he ranks third in the RMAC with nine successful field goals. I think he's 9 of 11 on the season with a long of 51, guys. So he's got some range. Uh, if, if Colorado Mesa able to get into that and they feel comfortable trying that, he has connected from 51 yards today. Of course, their punter is Isaac Mestis, the, the guy, that, the Swiss Army knife that we already talked about, the running back, the punter, the punt returner. That is Colorado Mesa at a glance and what we expect from them. We've got to take a break inside the TDS pregame show. Let's take a two-minute timeout. When we come back, we'll break down Dixie State. How do the Trailblazers bounce back from last week and uh, how – 
can they establish maybe a run game that has been missing that I think is key to not only winning this game, but next week at Mines and then against Adams State as well in a couple of weeks. And then we'll look at the RMAC schedule and the standings. Two-minute timeout and back with the TDS pregame show. You know, we may have started out small, but we were great. Families and fans rallied behind their team. The community cared. And everyone showed up to cheer. Now, we're bigger than ever. Dixie State is going to Division One. But at the end of the day, it's the community and fans that make us great. Whether you give five bucks or a thousand, every dollar, every seat in the stands, every one of you can help blaze our trail to Division I athletics. Because this is our team. There is a place where young and old make connections. Where kids feel like grown-ups. And grown-ups feel like kids. There is a place where beauty arises in contrast, where wonder is universal and laughter second nature. There is a place where friends find a future, families find each other, and feelings find their home. There is a place. play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. Indeed it is Dixie State Football on the Trailblazer Football Network. It is the TDS pregame show. Carrick Sagmiller, Andy Thompson, and Drayson Ball breaking this game down for you. In the previous segment, we took a look at Colorado Mesa and some of their key stats and key players. Uh, let's continue on inside the TDS pregame show and talk about the, the hometown Trailblazers. Drayson, we'll, we'll start with you. Obviously, this is an opportunity to have a bounce-back game. It's hard to to continue to win games consecutively. It's hard to win any game in college football or you know any level of football for that matter. But to win six in a row, you try to make it seven, you came up a little short, some things that went wrong. How do the Trailblazers start in terms of, hey, let's bounce back and let's try to fix this thing this week against Colorado Mesa? Well, I think it all comes down to just coming out and playing with heart. I think the Trailblazers, like I mentioned earlier in the pregame show, I just don't think they came out super sharp and super hungry. I think Shadron came out. They were the more desperate team. They had to have, you know, in their minds, they had to win that game last week, and I think the Trailblazers maybe got just a little bit complacent, and, and you know, you got to be able to turn that around. you got to be able to come out and say, hey, you know what? We got a, a little bit humbled last week in a game that we felt like we, we had a good chance to win. They have to feel the same way about their chances to win today, but they got to come out with a little bit more energy, a little bit more heart, and come out with a little bit more of a desire to win this game. Almost be a little bit desperate to win this game. You know, obviously, you never want to win. You never want to lose a game in conference play. You certainly never want to lose two back to back, especially here uh, in your home stadium. So, if the Trailblazers can come out today, be a little bit more desperate, a little bit more hungry, with a little bit more energy and focus, I think they'll be able to put up a good game plan and make this a really competitive ball game. Andy, we talked before the break as we were teasing this segment that, uh, you know, and we've talked and, and I think the sentiment is that, you know, Coach Paul Peterson, and we know this, he, he told us in the very first interview we had with him this year that, hey, we're ready to launch and we want to pass the ball. Absolutely. Uh, lost a little bit this year has been the run. There's been a few good games, 269 yards on the road in New Mexico Highlands on September 21st, 204 yards as a team against Black Hill State, 185 against Simon Fraser, and those are, of course, all games that they blew the opponent out, that they were able to run and pass the ball effectively. Since then, Trailblazers just 106 yards on the road at Western Colorado, just 111 against Shadron State. I mean, if you look individually, and, and you and I were talking about this and prepping for this game yeah. yesterday, we were chatting about it. You look individually, CJ Luongo right now is really about 10 carries per game fewer than last season in, in the season when he set the career rushing record. He's yet to go for 100 yards. 
No uh, Dixie State running backs over 100 yards this season. You get the feeling that in order to beat Colorado Mesa today and then especially to have success against Colorado Mines next week and then Adam State the week after, you've got to be able to run the football. Yeah, and say, Jay, his numbers have been down a little bit. A lot of that is a function of the type of offense you mentioned that Coach Peterson likes to run where he's airing it out. Um, you know, Sage had a great game against Colorado Mesa last season. In the first quarter, he broke that big run for 60-something yards and a touchdown, was up around 100 yards against the Mavericks. I think he has to have that kind of a game. Now, I know it, it's kind of running back by committee, similar to Mesa this year, where they've got three really good backs, and they kind of spread it around. Dixie State's done that a little bit too. But, but Sage has been, I think, the man uh, since he's been here, and especially last year, his kind of breakout season. And I think he's got to kind of have his – a breakout game tonight to get a, a, a good win against the Mavericks. I would add that obviously it's not just the running backs, but it's it's the offensive line. You've got to make holes for your running back to have success. At the same time, though, uh, this Dixie State offensive line as the Trailblazers take the field today, uh, followed uh, behind that DSU flags and Brooks the Bison leading them out. Uh, they're going to go back to the, the red on blue combo today. Red jerseys, red helmets, blue pants. Uh, love that combo, had success in that combo against Simon Fraser a couple of weeks ago. This 60 State offensive line, though, guys, they have got to give Cody Wilstead time to throw the football. A couple of weeks ago at Western Colorado, Wilstead was running for his life uh, in the first half against Western. They made some adjustments. They figured it out in that third quarter. Last week in the first half again against Shadron State, Wilstead running for his life. He was sacked two or three times, and that led to bringing in a more mobile quarterback in Tanner Hammond, who was the number two quarterback available last week, and, and he did an exceptional job. He came in and he had a great game. I think you've got to have uh, your Cody Wilstead in the game for the duration to win this football game. You need his arm. You need the plays that he can make out there. So this Dixie State offensive line has got to do a better job of giving him time. That is Dixie State and what the Trailblazers need to do. We'll have some quality and keys to the game after this upcoming break. The, the national anthem here in the stadium coming up in just a couple of minutes. Let's quickly take a quick look at the conference standings. Colorado School of Mines, of course, 8 no guys still. Uh, the Trailblazers now in solo third place after the loss last week. CSU Pueblo in second place at 6-1. and one. Dixie State at 5-2. and two. Colorado Mesa is 4-3. and three. Western Colorado is 4-3. and three. Adams State is 4-4. Four and four. Shadron State still at 3-4. and four. Fort Lewis three and five, Black Hill State two and six, and then both South Dakota Mines and New Mexico Highlands at one and six each. Your uh, RMAC schedule this week: CSU Pueblo is at Fort Lewis, and you want to talk about some key games, guys. This is one that I marked down as a key game. You wouldn't expect CSU Pueblo to lose at Fort Lewis, but it has happened. Even two years ago, uh, the the Skyhawks knocked off CSU Pueblo in Durango. Uh, Fort Lewis plays well in Durango. We'll keep an eye on that game. It actually is underway. We'll give you a score as we get going here. Adam State is in non-conference action. They will host Angelo State. Uh, Western Colorado is at Black Hill State. Colorado School of Mines at South Dakota Mines. And then Shadron State at New Mexico Highlands. So really that key matchup other than this one, I think our game against Colorado Mesa and then the CSU Pueblo at Fort Lewis. That's your two key conference matchups today as we get set for the national anthem inside the TDS pregame show. We're going to step away. Two-minute timeout. When we come back, we've got some quality in keys to the game and some Cafe Sabor starting lineups for you. Two-minute timeout and back to Trouble as we There is a place where looking out means looking in, where an impression lasting only a few seconds will be imprinted on a life forever, where courage is forged and innocence rediscovered, where remembering is rewarding and forgetting unforgettable. There is a place where truth is felt and where seeing is believing. There is a place. Radio Dixie 91.3. We don't play that. Nope, not that. A big fat no there. That's what we play. And stuff like that. On St. George's only alternative, Radio Dixie 91.3. Oh, and from 9 till midnight, we play this. I need a one And this. Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. I got you right where I want you. I make this one, it's over. I win. No pressure. Bring it.
We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. For over a century, Dixie State University has been shaping the trailblazers of tomorrow by providing a culture of active learning, active life. With a paradigm of real-world experience mixed with cutting-edge technologies and rich traditions, we provide one of the most affordable educations in the West set against the most stunning backdrop on the planet. Welcome back inside the TDS pregame show. Winding down just about four and a half minutes until kickoff. They'll have the coin toss here in just a few minutes. We'll let you know the results of that and let you know who will have the ball first. But it's time for our quality in keys to the game. And, guys, uh, you know, we try to think of these every week. Uh, and Drayson, you and I had some fun with some of these earlier in the year with some alliteration. Uh, uh, we're not, we didn't do that this week. You know, we, we thought you know, there's, no, there's no room to get cute. Dixie State needs a win this week, so we just went – down and dirty, and we've got some basic keys to the game for you. Brought to you by Quality Inn. Let's go with those. And the first one, Drayson, um, and, and, and this is kind of interesting because we mentioned earlier that Colorado Mesa is a team that will uh, has more passing yards than rushing yards, but they like to set up the pass with the run. So the first key, Drayson, is stop the run. Yeah, you have to be good on the run game today. You know, you mentioned they got three good quality running backs, Isaac Mestis, uh, Trey Windham, and Jesse Rodriguez as well. You have to be good on the run today. Last week, Elijah Miles ran for nearly 200 yards on the ground against the Trailblazers for Shadron State. You have to be better. I mentioned uh, uh, Bollinger, a good quarterback, but he's not – uh, an elite quarterback like we've seen so far in the uh, Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. Bollinger has not had a game where he has had a completion percentage of more than 46%. His best game was against South Dakota Mines. He went 12 of 26 for 294 yards, a touchdown and an interception. He has not thrown for more than 163 yards since that game. Force Bollinger to beat you. Stop the run game, and the Trailblazers have to be good on first and second downs against the run to force CMU into throwing situations on third down. Of course, that leads right into our next key, uh, Andy. Last week, it seemed like two or three times against Shadron State, there was touchdown passes that there was blown coverage. Yeah. Wide open receivers. Second key, as you talk about, you know, make Bollinger beat you. Don't you know? Don't let him have an easy throw. No blown coverages. Yeah, we and we saw that in week one against Colorado State Pueblo, where guys just got lost. There was broken coverages, miscommunication, and then they did pretty well until last week against Shadron State. They got to recoup, get back to their disciplined defense in the secondary, and good communication because Bollinger can hurt you deep. Of course, final key of the game is win the trenches. And that, that's a basic one. You could say that every week. But we've mentioned Dixie State needing to establish the run game. So this offensive line for Dixie State has to have their best game of the season today. And then last week, how about Dixie State coming into the game, leading the nation in all in Division II in sacks. No sacks last week against Shadron State for the Trailblazers. This is a game you've got to get to Bollinger. If you can disrupt Hayden Bollinger in the backfield and stop, stop the run game, but if you can disrupt Hayden Bollinger, he will make mistakes. He has thrown six interceptions this season. He's been he's been seen to, to throw under pressure, to, to short arm guys, throw the ball at feet or just throw it up. If you can get to Bollinger, he will make mistakes and you can get back to those interceptions that you saw earlier in the season. Those are your quality in keys to the game. Dixie State has won the coin toss. They've deferred to the second half, so Colorado Mesa will receive. So let's go to our Cafe Sabor starting lineups. And, Drayson, we're going to start with the defense, and uh, and let's get you the, the correct starters there. There it is on your screen. Starting defense for Dixie State. Drayson, who do we have? Yeah, up front on the defensive line, LaNdre Schwally next to Tyler Heaton, Tariq Wright, and the leading uh, sack Man in the Armac, defensive end Dylan Hendrickson alongside Malaki Malaki, Sir Barnes, and Alex Lilliard are your linebackers. Darius Nash, Augustus Frazier, JT Anderson, and Devin Chandler make up your secondary for Dixie State. And, of course, let's go to the offense because I always forget. I say, hey, we're going to wait until Dixie State has the football, <laughs> and then I forget. A Andy, who do we have there uh, across the front? I'll give you the big guys up front. So Dixie State offensively is going to start Taylor Alvarez from left to right, Taylor Alvarez, CEO, Tommy Haunga, Nathan Aceves, Tima Malia Tulua, and Adib Jowney. Uh, 
up front, those are your five big guys. Who are the, the skill guys for the Trailblazers today, at, Andy? At quarterback, Cody Wilstead. Running back, C.J. Luongo. Your three receivers are Casey Allison, Xavier Smith, and Dewan Danzler, and tight end Chase Hess. Here we go. Let's play football. TDS pregame show in the books. Carrick Segmiller, Andy Thompson, Drayson Ball with you. We turn the crowd mic up so you radio listeners can listen in. Back deep to receive for the Mavericks. It will be Justin White and Nick Sissio. Uh, they're standing on uh, either hash mark. Near side is Sissio. Far side is Justin White. James Baird gets the signal. He's set to put this one into play and let's play football. James Baird, end over end kick. It'll be short and returnable. It'll be Sissio from the eight yard line, left hash. Moving around across the field, left to right, and he's hit and brought down immediately. Only one tackler necessary, and that is Connor McKay, the Dixie State linebacker, flying in there, the red shirt freshman, the big stop on special teams. Yeah, and good for the Trailblazers uh, special teams there. That McKay was able to bring him down. He had some room to run, but a good open field tackle by Connor McKay. Thought he initially would have uh, was going to let him go, but was able to grab him by his shoestrings and bring him down there just across the 20. It's exactly what you like to see for Dixie State. You want to have a positive start to this football game. Indeed, it will be Hayden Bollinger dragging onto the field for this Colorado Mesa offense. And at his right hip, he's got a three receiver set, two on the left, one on the right. And at the right hip is Isaac Mestis. It'll be Mestis on first down, off tackle right side. Ball came out. It is free, and Colorado Mesa is going to fall on it. A Dixie State player had a chance to scoop it up and maybe run to the end zone. He couldn't get it. Colorado Mesa will scoop it up. Yeah, Hendrickson, it came right to his feet. He reached down but couldn't grab it. Maybe just should have fallen on it as he saw it. But he wanted to get oh. to six, just missed it and a bigger recovery there for the Mavericks. This is a Colorado Mesa team that has fumbled the football uh, 18 times now this season. Out pass on second down will be caught and it will go for a gain of five. They lost four yards on first down. Be gain of five on second, third down and nine upcoming. Yeah, just a little out route. Uh, that was Peter Anderson just coming on a short little five yard out. Bollinger does a good job finding him. Pass was a little high, but of course Anderson's a good receiver. He can go up and grab that ball, brings it in, and forces third down and nine. That was the Mavericks' 19th fumble of the season. They've lost 12 of them, so something to keep an eye on throughout this game. Third and nine, here's Bollinger with time, fires across the middle, and it's up and over the top of the intended receiver, and that intended receiver was Bradley Toussaint. Good coverage by the Trailblazers. They force a three and out. They're going to get the football back. In. Yeah, and they set numbers on third down to bother Bollinger, and just miscommunication as you described, Carrick, way overthrown. Nobody there, incomplete. Now, it was in between two receivers. Toussaint was there, as well as the big tight end, number 87, Sean Apiki. He was there, but thrown just both over both of their heads. So here's Isaac Mestis. He will stay on the field to punt the football away, standing at his own 10-yard line. And he's averaging almost 40 yards per punt, doing a good job of punting. He will force uh, Xavier Smith to his left. Smith will let it bounce, and it's going to take a Colorado Mesa bounce inside the 30, and it will roll down to the 25-yard line. And Dixie State will have a 75-yard field. So Dixie State bringing the offense onto the field for the first time after forcing a three and out. Don't want to forget this. We do want to welcome in our audience from Grand Junction, Colorado, on the CMU Sports Network. That's KTMM 13. 40 a.m. the team in Grand Junction. We're happy to have you along today. Excited to see how the Trailblazers offense comes out on their first possession. Cody Wilstead has, a, has to have a, ba a bounce back game from last week where he just went just two of ten. And look at this. Keaton Mott wow. is jogging out to start at quarterback. He was not even on the two deep this week. I stand this goes to show we never know. I stand we never know what's going on. Keaton Mott did not play the last couple of weeks, was dinged up. He's going to get the start today. On a first down, reverse play. Here's Jalen Powell right to left. He's got room, 35, 30, 40, and he tiptoes the sideline. He stepped out of bounds. Where did he step out? Shy of the 40 at the, are they marking him at the 39-yard line, but a gain of 14 on the trickeration on first down. And a great seal block on that left side. Keith Mott got out there as well and disrupted some of the tacklers on the left side. We'll see the reverse coming to get Newman going the other way. And then they've got numbers going to the left, and he almost was able to stay in bounds, tipped on down the sideline. On first down, read option. Mott will leave it with C.J. Luongo, and he'll power through for two yards right up the middle. It'll be second down and eight. Clock ticking, 13.06 remaining on your Camping World scoreboard. First quarter just underway. Dixie State forced a three and out, and now has the football second and eight from their own 41. Right back to C.J. Bounces out to the left. 45-50, 45, and undercut at the 45-yard line, make it the 44 of Colorado Mesa. He'll 
Get the first down, brought to you by Lonnie Boys Barbecue, the chains move. Yeah, one of Luongo's best qualities is he's got great vision. This play designed to go up the middle, hold closes off initially. He bounces it to the outside and then it was get into open field space. Mott, play action on first down, loads up, fires. Ball hangs up, has a man and it's incomplete. Dewan Dantzler was there in coverage was Devante Loggins and there was some pushing on both sides. Incomplete pass into the end zone. And the Trailblazers will reset on second down. May have had Jalen Powell in front of a safety here, but decided to go deep yeah. as opposed to throwing it down the middle just to give his outside receiver a chance to go up and get it just overthrown a little bit. Taylor Alvarez doing a great job at that left tackle position so far for Dixie State. Tied in Chase Hess moves from left to right, and on second down they leave with CJ. And he had a hole, but it closed up quickly. And defensive player diving at his feet. And I didn't quite catch the number of who that was that took his feet out. That's Mason Newton. Mason Newton. Yep. Second on the team in tackles with 57 now. He leads the RMAC. Tied with Dylan Henderson and Sachs. Leads the RMAC in tackles for loss. That one goes for just about a half a yard. It's a gain of one, they'll say. Third down and nine at the Colorado Mesa 43. Empty backfield. Five receivers set for the Trailblazers, including Sage Luongo split out to the left. Mott, slant route inside to the tight end. Chase Hess makes the catch, fighting his way forward across the 40, diving for the 35-yard line. Not going to get there. Picked up the 36. Needed nine yards. Got seven and it will be fourth down and two, but kind of in no man's land, and I think the offense is going to stay on the field. Yeah, I don't mind the seven-yard route when you know you're in four-down four territory. You're going to go for it anyway, set up a fourth and short. Well, here we go. Dixie State, we won't call it the power eye, but you got a two-back set. It's in the shotgun. Natoa and Luongo, play action. Luongo. And a pass over the top intended for Chase Hess, and it drops incomplete just over his outstretched hands. Dixie State will turn it over. Yeah, I ran a little play action here and uh, just wanted to get Chase Hess kind of down the sidelines running by the numbers. He had a step on his man, but this one just a little bit overthrown by Keaton Mutt. You see, if he brings that one in, he's got green grass all the way to the end zone, but and just this one thrown a little bit too far. And Chase Hess, the big tight end, with just one cornerback trailing him, probably would have made it to the end zone. As it is, it's a turnover on downs, and Colorado Mesa will start at its own 36-yard line. It is Jesse Rodriguez at the left hip of Bollinger, You'll see this a lot. Even at quarterback every once in a while, they'll switch it up. They'll switch these three running backs out a lot in Wyndham, Bollinger, excuse me, Wyndham, Rodriguez, who has the first down take right up the middle. Thought he was going to be stopped after just a yard or so, and he keeps the legs churning. He'll pick up eight yards, second down and two upcoming, but it's a three-headed monster, guys, between Mestis, Wyndham and Rodriguez, and right there, Rodriguez went for seven. And Tariq Wright got there, filled the hole, but the running back just snuck right by him. He didn't get any hands on him, and a pretty good gain there on first. That was Rodriguez, 72nd carry of the season on second down. They go back for him, and he breaks two tackles again, free across the 50, 45 down near the 40, and is brought down by Alex Lillier, just shy of the Dixie State 40 at the 42-yard line. And yeah, they don't go to Rodriguez often. I mean, you just mentioned 73 attempts so far in the season. Just now over 300 yards, but he is certainly a capable running back in the backfield. He gets free, gets loose down the left sideline, takes two Dixie State defenders to bring him down. Rodriguez, redshirt freshman out of Bennett, Colorado. On a first down, here's Bollinger to the sideline. Catch is made, did not get the foot down, though. Catch was made by Toussaint, and they're actually going to say he was bobbling the football, so it wasn't a whether he got the foot down. It was he was bobbling the football incomplete on the near sideline. Yeah, just a little bit wide on the delivery to Toussaint and just juggles it a little bit. And uh, Good play by JT on. Anderson. As soon as that ball was touched, he got the hands yeah. in the back and knocked him out of bounds and kind of forced that incompletion. Second down and 10 for the Mavericks from the Trailblazers' 42-yard line. Three receivers set, two back set right now with Mestis and Wyndham on either side of Bollinger in the shotgun. Two split out wide, one receiver split out to the left. They're going to go with Wyndham, and he'll take it right up the gut. And he's brought down at the 40-yard line, a pickup of two. It'll be third down and eight for the Mavericks from the Dixie State 40-yard line. But just like the Trailblazers, I think you're going to see Colorado Mesa kind of in that no man's land. This is probably four down territory depending on what happens on third down. Yeah, Wyndham uh, gets right up the middle there. Malaki Malaki wraps him up and brings him down. Trailblazers have had a couple of situations today where they're not being able to bring down on initial contact. Malaki Malaki does a good job there of getting his arms around him and not letting him get free. Third down and eight, nine to 50 remaining. Here in quarter number one on your Camping World scoreboard, we're scoreless. 
Bollinger across the middle, incomplete. Had the tight end, Sean Apiki, open, but kind of like the Keaton Mott toss to Chase Hess, up and out of his reach. Couldn't get his outstretched hands on it, incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Here comes Mestis to punt. And Dixie State ran a zone blitz. They actually dropped Hendrickson back into pass cover and just brought a linebacker, bothered the quarterback just a little bit. He had time, just overshot it. And with this punt situation that there is immediate timeout available so we'll see if they take it after the punt mess this right from midfield high kick end over end kick and Dixie State gonna let it just bounce at the 10 down to the 5 and it'll be fielded at the one yard line by Colorado Mesa and that was Nick Smith redshirt freshman linebacker from Roosevelt Utah few Utah guys on this squad he catches it at the one Dixie State will have a 99 yard field teams coming out onto the field and they are going to take the media timeout with 9.38 remaining. Dixie State and Colorado Mesa scoreless 90-second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Football Network. Hi, I'm Smokey Cole Bear. Filling in, because for 75 years, Smokey only said, only you can prevent wildfires. Hey, Ken. Meanwhile, can you hear me? the song was wrong. We did start the fire. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Play Eric Amarola's Race Day Mix. Hey, what's up, in? man? Hey, good, good, good. You played before, right? Oh, absolutely. It's okay. all state, high school. Good, let's run some routes. Give me a post route. All right, let's do it. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. There is a place where the sun doesn't hide in the winter, where the greens stay green and the crimson canyons still glow. There is a place where dimples determine destiny and a tiny wooden tee holds the outcome in the balance. There is a place where we drive for show, putt for dough, and settle the score with another round. There is a place. Welcome back, Dixie State facing a 99-yard field with 9.38 to go in the first quarter. We are scoreless in your Camping World scoreboard. Keaton Mott standing in his own end zone. The fire, far sideline. Casey Allison there brings it in, and the Trailblazers have it across the 25 down to the 29-yard line of Colorado Mesa. And I love the timing fade route to Allison on first down. When Dixie State's had their biggest offensive games, it's when Allison gets involved. This time they just take advantage of his size, goes up at high points, and comes down inbound. First down at 10, they're going to say actually has it at the 27. So the Trailblazers from the 27, Sage Luongo off tackle right side. And he's hit and stopped after a pickup of one. It'll be second down and nine out to the 28-yard line. Clock rolling, 9.05 to go in the first. And you can see the Trailblazers really trying to emphasize getting this ground game rolling uh, after a few good runs in that first possession. A couple of up-the-middle runs have not had a, a, a tremendous amount of success, but credit the Trailblazers trying to get that run game going. We'll have a halftime score for you between Pueblo and Fort Lewis after this play. Read option, Keaton Mott going to keep it on second down, and that did not fool the Colorado Mesa defense. He'll pick up a couple of yards from the 28 out to the 31-yard line, so it'll be third down and six upcoming. But did not fool the majority of the Colorado Mesa defense. What a fill there by Dylan Tate, the inside linebacker, just ran right past the Dixie State offensive lineman to put on a big hit. At halftime, CSU Pueblo leading Fort Lewis 14-7 in Durango. So far from over there. We mentioned that one was one of our key games in the RMAC this week. We mentioned that during the TDS pregame show. 8-11 to go in the first quarter. Dixie State, Colorado Mesa scoreless in Trailblazer Stadium. Jalen Powell in motion from left to right. Shotgun snap to Mod on third down. P pass across the middle, and it's incomplete. Nearly intercepted by Nick Sissio, 
and Xavier Smith turned into a defensive back on that play and broke up what would have been a sure interception. Yeah, Smith was coming open over the middle, but uh, Keaton Mott just stared him down for a minute, and then Nick Sissio recognized the ball was coming to him, planted his foot in the ground, and immediately came downfield. Fortunately for the Trailblazers, that one was not picked off. But Nick Sissio, that's what he does. He's one of their best safeties. He's leading the Armac right now with five interceptions. Did a good job of reading Keaton Mott's eyes there. And Xavier Smith just had to break that one up. Hunter Wood set to punt, standing at his own 17-yard line. The punt is away. Flag flies as the punt is away. Messis will field it at the 25-yard line. Gets out of the outstretched hands of Dylan Douglas and then is tripped up on the play by Darman Natoa. Now there's a flag on the play, so we gotta wait and see what that flag was all about. Is it offsides or is it gonna be a procedure penalty? It looks like it might be some sort of procedure against Dixie State. Thrown on the far sideline about three or four yards. They're asking the Colorado Mesa coaches what they wanna do. We may see a repunt. Illegal formation, five men in the backfield, offense. Mesa has elected to accept that penalty. Re-kick fourth down. And that is our official our referee today, Gary Leeper, making the call for us. And I wondered, just you know, being able to pin Dixie State back a little bit further, whether uh, Coach Russ Martin and the Mavericks would elect to make them punt again, and they're going to. You never know. It, it seems like some of these punts have been a little slow to get out, and they almost got to that one. And they're going to try to make Hunter Wood punt again. This time he's standing at his own 12 and messed this across the 30 at the 32-yard line of Colorado Mesa. It's a low snap. Wood picks it up, and it's blocked. And that's exactly why they wanted to repunt. It's going to be picked up and run in for a touchdown. Touchdown to Mavericks, and it's Justin White that will take it into the end zone, and that is exactly why head coach Russ Martin elected to re-kick. And they sent full pressure the first time, they sent it the second time, this time he gets through after the bat botch snap, hits the ground, almost kneels on it with possession. Instead it gets blocked and an easy scoop and score after they push the punter over here. And guess who on the block? Nick Sissio. He does Nick it Sissio all. on the block, Justin White recovers it, takes it into the end zone. And you, you can't fault Hunter Wood for trying to get that football away, but maybe after the bounce and, and, the, and the roll, maybe you're better just kind of sitting on that one and see what your defense can do. But it's taken into the end zone, and here comes Ruiz Diaz for the PAT. And it is up, and it is through. With 7.37 to go on your Camping World scoreboard, Colorado Mesa has struck first. Colorado Mesa 7, Dixie State nothing. We take the 30-second timeout, just the 30, and come back on the Trailblazer Football Network. All right, Monroe, you ready? Monroe. Here we go, the butterfly. Ready? Well, last, last time Dixie State had a punt block returned for a touchdown. It's two years ago. Cole Thurnus against Shadron State here at home on October 7, 2017. The good news about that game, Dixie State went on to win that game 38 to 24. Good news. So Dixie State giving up the punt block, touchdown early in the first quarter to the Mavericks and they trail seven nothing, but still plenty of time to make something happen. Darman Natoa will field this ball over the shoulder catch and kneels it five yards deep in the end zone. The Trailblazers will start from their own 25 yard line. Guys, put your coaching hats on. Drayson, if, if you're head coach Paul Peterson, what are you telling your guys? Look, it's only seven nothing. It's midway through the first quarter. We're fine. Yeah, I think you just keep, you tell them to stick with the game plan. Obviously, we've seen them try to establish the run early on. I think you got to continue to try to do that. You had some success. The first play was that reverse uh, for 14 yards to Jalen Powell. Sage Luongo had a, a 10 plus yard run early on, or early on there. You've had some success getting to the outside, not so much going up the middle. Maybe see if you can get a little bit more plays, maybe jet sweeps or things going out to the outside, see if you can get some extra yards there. 
7-0, Dixie State trailing, 7.37 to go on the first. Play action on first down, Mott across the middle, and it is caught by Jalen Powell, free at the 50, 45, spinning away from the defender at the 40, and he'll be brought down from behind at the Colorado Mesa 40-yard line. CMU defender went for the pick or the hit on the pass, missed him, and Powell made him pay inside Maverick territory to the 40. Yeah, good read by Keaton Mott here on the run pass option, fakes it, and then throws a pretty precise pass. He threw it before the safety had a chance to get to it. On a first down, Mott. Pressure comes and he is brought down back to the 45 yard line to make it the 44 yard line. A loss of four on a first down as Colorado Mesa gets the first sack of the game. Yeah, he had pressure from both ends, forcing him to step up into the pocket. Tried to keep it, tuck it, and run, but he was met by Kyle Schulman there coming right up the middle and brought down for a loss of four on first down. Seems like that's kind of been the theme so far for Dixie State in this game for the first half of the first quarter. A couple steps forward, one step back. We'll see if they can now take a couple more steps forward. Second down and 14 ball at the Maverick 44-yard line. Jet sweep, Jalen Powell around the right end, and he's brought down immediately. He had one man to beat, got a block, had one man to beat, but couldn't get around Dylan Tate, and he's brought down no gain at the 44-yard line. Been super impressed with Tate filling off the left edge of that Mavericks defense. There was a, a blocker there who was supposed to chip him, but just couldn't get there in time, and Tate drills Powell. 6-10 to go here in the first. Remember three years ago when Dixie State beat Colorado Mesa, they trailed 17 to nothing in the first quarter and came back and won 38-31. I'm sure a lot of you Maverick fans on listening on CMU Sports Network, KTMM 1340 AM, remember that football game. I was there in Grand Junction. Fun football game. Mott will step up on third down. Fires across the middle. Casey Allison's there, makes the catch inside the 30, down to the 25-yard line. Called a pickup of 19 from Keaton Mott to Casey Allison. Flag in the backfield, but a good read there by Keaton Mott. Looks like this play is going to be coming back. Ball is, uh, the flag is about the 50-yard line in the, in the Dixie State backfield as we get the call here from the referee. Holding, number 58, offense, 10-yard penalty, still third down. It's Taylor Alvarez. We'd love to get another look at that maybe if we could, if we've got a look back there in the backfield. He was to Mason, see that. Mason Newton coming off that right edge, had a chance to get up to Mott. Mott stepped up and threw a fastball down the field, but... Probably, probably one of his better throws it today. And now he it's wound up on that one. Third down in a country mile. Dixie State, third down from Hurricane almost. The handoff to Armin Atoa. They go conservative. He'll get it back out to the 50-yard line, but no further. And Dixie State will punt from midfield. And I think Keaton Mott is going to stay in for punting duties. Unless they're going to go for it from midfield. I can't imagine they're going to go for it from here, but it looks like the offense, the is, offense jogging is on the field. Back still. Onto the field, so uh, a risky play here. I, I wouldn't be surprised. It's going to be a quick. It's probably going to be a quick a pooch punt, punt. Pooch punt. Keaton Mott has punting abilities. Mestis comes off the field and then has to run right back out, and it's going to take a Dixie State bounce inside the ten, and it will roll and be down at the eight yard line. And they're going to say officially the nine. So it'll be a long field for Colorado Mesa. And the Trailblazers doing some good things, but not able to string together a full drive yet. Well, going back to what Drayson brought up, I think they, they have advantage potentially going to the edges, whether it's throwing it out at a screen on a bubble to a wide receiver or get Powell going uh, left to right. They just got to block Tate, who's filling beautifully on that Mavericks defense. But going between the tackles hasn't worked. And, and Mott's had some open guys. He's... Kind of been hit and miss so far in the first half, but so far they've looked they looked fairly sharp on offense. They just got to execute. There's one thing I would like to see on this drive. I want to see I want to see Dixie State break through and get to to Bollinger. That defensive line has got to get through. On first down, it's Rodriguez left side, and he is brought down. Awkward looking tackle. Flag stay in, so no face masks involved. But a Three-yard run on first down. It'll be second down and seven. And yeah, Malaki Malaki was stiff-armed by Rodriguez initially, but did a good job of holding on. We've seen this a time or two from Malaki Malaki so far today. And he just grabs on to the runner, does not let him get free, and brings him down just across the 10-yard line. They'll give him five yards officially. They'll go back to Rodriguez. Up the middle, spins off a defender. He's across the 20, and then stacked up and pushed back. Needed five, got seven across the 20 to the 22-yard line. 
And the trail and the Mavericks will have another first down of the chains move. Another chance for Dixie State to get them after only a couple yards. They're reading Hendrickson on this play. A diving uh, cornerback got into his ankles but just couldn't grab his leg. Well, at the 22-yard line, 4.07 remaining in the first quarter. Bollinger has the offense set. Now they'll stand up and look back toward the sideline and get set. Two receivers split out wide right, one to the near side on the left, and two backs in the backfield. They go play action with Rodriguez. Fire downfield, and a mat is there, but incomplete. Pass was intended for the receiver, Christopher Brown. Man in coverage was Devin Chandler. Yeah, this is just a streak down the middle, just a, a seam route. Bollinger just stepped up in the pocket, put some air under it, but just throws this one a little bit too far. Devin Chandler running step for step there with the intended receiver. You can tell how concerned they are about Hendrickson. They had the H-back the move across the formation to come over and help out with him on the edge. He had a pretty good speed rush on that down. Second down and 10. They'll go back to Rodriguez. Flag flies right in the area where you would assume it's probably a hold, but you'll have to wait and see. The run went for one yard, but you're probably going to see a hold. We'll wait and get the call from Gary Leeper, today's official. And Colorado Mesa is pointing Dixie State's way. Personal foul. Legal hands to the face. Number 52, defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, that hurts. You're going to be you're going to be facing third down and nine. Instead, hands to the face called against Tyler Heaton. And you see him right there at the end of the play. It certainly didn't like he was engaged in anybody right there. But something that happened early on, and it's going to be a first down for Colorado Mesa out to the 38-yard line. That's a killer. After having stopped him, uh, you know, short gain on, on second down, you're thinking, you know, third down and long or maybe even second down and 20-plus yards. But now you got a first down and 10 after the 15-yard penalty. Clock rolling, 3.15 to go in quarter number one. Flags fly. And Colorado Mesa was going to take a timeout with the play clock winding down. First timeout of the half. 3.14 to go. We'll take it as well. Timeouts are brought to you by Dairy Queen. Dixie State trailing 7-0 on the Trailblazer Football Network. 30-second timeout right back to St. George. All right, man. I need you to go deep. All right, I'll catch this one, I promise. Post route, back of the end zone. Got it, let's do it. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. Three fourteen to go. First quarter, Dixie State trailing seven nothing, and timeout called by Colorado Mesa after the hands of the face penalty against Dixie State. The Mavericks set up nicely to continue the drive. First down at ten from their own thirty-eight yard line. Balls on the left hash right now. Three receivers set. Bollinger play action, looking across the middle. Instead, fires down the far sideline. Man is there, and it is broken up, incomplete. Broken up by Devin Chandler. Were they going for Brown? Or for Anderson. First time today yeah. they've targeted Peter Anderson and he couldn't come up with a catch. Yeah, and he almost had it. That was just great recovery, great defense, getting your arms up and poking the ball away at the last second, as we see here on the replay. A little bit underthrown. He's so athletic to go. He's only 5'11", but he gets up and almost makes a beautiful catch, but good defense. You see the speed of Anderson and yes. the arm of Bollinger. Uh, fortunate for Devin Chandler to be able to knock that ball down. Deadly combination. Second down and 10. Ball at the 38-yard line. Bollinger... Gives some instructions to the offensive line, and Rodriguez will move from right to left. Quarterback keeper, Bollinger, out of the backfield, across the 40, diving for the 45, not going to get it. He stopped at the 43-yard line, a pickup of five. It'll be third down and five from the Colorado Mesa 43-yard line and a crucial third down for Dixie State. If you can get this third down stop, you're at the point of the field where you'd force the, Ma the Mavericks to punt. Uh, you'd have, you know, obviously it would be good to get off the field at this point. We saw them have trouble last week. The Trailblazers were not able to get off the field on third down. We'll see if they'll be able to turn that around today against a team that's only 39% on third downs so far this season. And 0 for 2 today is Colorado Mesa on third down. Bollinger rolls out to his right, fires to the sideline, incomplete. 
pass was intended for K.J. Sapp on the far sideline, but good coverage by Dixie State, and it will be a punting situation. The Trailblazers will get the football back. Yeah, two great plays by the secondary. They're going to roll away from Hendrickson's side, go right, and delivers it just a little bit wide to the sideline. That's Alex Good job Lilliard. by Lilliard in coverage. And we've seen Bollinger have some accuracy issues, like I mentioned. Only 42% completion percentage on the season for your quarterback. You'd love for that to be in the mid to high 50s, maybe even into the 60s, but not a, a tremendously accurate pass there from Bollinger. Dixie State brings hardly anyone. Xavier Smith will call for the fair catch. Where are they going to mark him? Back at the 14-yard line of Dixie State. Dylan Hendrickson was the lone rusher on that play as Mestis got it away. The Trailblazers are starting at their own 14-yard line. Reminds you, we want to thank some of our sponsors. Of course, coming up after this first half, the Seven Oaks Jewelers Halftime Report. Timeouts are brought to you by Dairy Queen today. First down is brought to you by Lonnie Boys Barbecue. 2.21 to go in the first, and the offense back onto the field. Led by Keaton Mott. Your receivers will be Xavier Smith, Casey Allison, and Dewan Dantzler, CJ Luongo, and Darman Atoa are your two backs. Shotgun formation for Keaton Mott. Two receivers on the near side. They'll give it to CJ, trying to get around the left end, and he's brought down from behind. And that's Kyle Schulman chasing him down. Yeah, this one designed to go off to the left, just off tackle, and Shulman comes from the weak side. You see here just tracking Sage Luongo down and brings him down there by his shoestring and uh, pick up a no gain. And that's actually Nick Smith. Got to give credit where credit is due. I saw the two. I thought it was a 52. It's a 32. Nick Smith on the tackle. 150 remaining in the first quarter. Dixie staying in no hurry right now. Second down and 10. Mott has time, fires, and that's going to be incomplete. Trying to... Finds Sage on the near sideline out of the backfield, and he threw it three yards to his right, incomplete. Third down and 10 for the Trailblazers. Yeah, way wide on the pass to Luongo. He had Xavier Smith on about a 15 yard out, but he was covered, and, and the safety had the deep man as well. So great coverage all the way around by the Mavericks. Yeah, and almost more of just a throwaway. Just didn't have anything open downfield and just wanted to throw it near a receiver, but far enough away that it couldn't get intercepted. Almost like a throwaway. Sage Luongo will come out. Chase Hess, the tight end, is in. Lined up, split out wide to the right. Keep your eye on him. These are your Chase Hess types of plays, and Mott likes to go to him. Mott looking, looking. Fire across the middle, tipped and intercepted. Off the hands of Dewan, Dewan Dantzler and into the hands of Devontae Loggins. And the Mavericks have it in Dixie State territory late in the first quarter. Yeah, really unfortunate for the Trailblazers. Dewan Dantzler had his hands right on this one. It was put right on the money. One, I, wish, I bet De Devin, Dewan Dantzler wishes he could have back. You see Mott does a good job, has some time, steps up into the pocket and finds Dantzler over the middle. Ball just hits him right on the hands. I mean, you couldn't have placed it in a better spot. Just off Dewan Dantzler's hands and into the hands of the, of the interceptor. Yeah, Devontae Loggins there, heads up play, saw the ball was in the air. We've seen the Dixie State receivers over the last few weeks have some trouble making catches on occasion. Here's Bollinger. They're going to go try to go home run ball. Bollinger the end zone, and it is batted down incomplete. He was going for his man, Peter Anderson, again, but Aaron Simpson there to say, nope, not on my watch. He bats it to the ground in the end zone. Been awesome on the deep route the secondary has all game long. They go max pro, giving Bollinger time throwing the home run like you said Carrick and he looks back sees the ball and makes a play on it great job but how many times do you see a team do that after a turnover you say we've got the momentum we're going to take a shot here didn't work that time on second down Mestis off tackle right side and he's got room inside the 15 excuse me inside the 25 and down to the 21 yard line of Dixie State a pickup of 13 yards on first down and the Mavericks knocking on the door of the true by Hilton red zone yeah, and Mestis is a load six foot 200 pounder out of Clifton Colorado he runs downhill when he gets into some open space he's not only got the speed but he lowers a boom and he's a big load to bring down at six foot 200 pounds First down at 10, ball at the right hash. They go back to Mestis, same play around the right end. Room again inside the 15 and down to the 14-yard line, a pickup of seven. And Isaac Mestis putting a hurt on the Trailblazers on this drive, and it's second down, and we'll call it three. Whistles, and we have an injury timeout far side. Devin Chandler's slow to get up. 
And I think they're going to replace him. He's going to come off. The trainers are coming off the field to look at him. JT Anderson will replace him. They'll make some swabs at linebacker as well. Sir Barnes and Malaki. Malaki going to come on. Yamasaki and McKay will come off. Second down and three for the Mavericks. And they're huddled up on the far sideline still. The Dixie State defense says, hey, we're ready to go. Dylan Hendrickson's halfway off the field. He thought he was coming off. Tyler Ahmed, defensive coordinator, says, no, stay in. Clock rolling, 35 seconds remaining in the first quarter. It's second down and three for Colorado Mesa at the Dixie State 14-yard line. Ball placed on the right hash. Bollinger gives back to Mestis, and he lowers the shoulders and the head, and he powers through for the three yards necessary down to the 10-yard line and a first down. And credit the Mavericks offensive line. They're doing a good job getting second level, especially when they go right through that A-gap, getting hands on linebackers. Great job. By number 76 there, that's Caden Sink. Clock rolling at five. They will run one more play. Back to Mestis, and this time he's met at the line of scrimmage. He'll give him one yard, but driven back on the final play of the first quarter. Mestis goes for one yard. 15 minutes of football in the books, and it's one that Dixie State will want to wipe out of its memory pretty quickly, and they'll try to dial up kind of a goal line stand here and try to force a field goal on the other side of this 30-second timeout. Colorado Mesa 7, Dixie State 0. 30-second timeout. No, make it a 60. End of the quarter. 60-second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Football Network. Our hearts are made stronger by how we treat others. Put her there. The light you share can impact those around you, but so can the darkness. Later, twerps. Did Pete saying mean things bother you? So when you reach out to another person, <laughs> take a moment to consider how they will feel and let your heart be the key to making a difference. Because of you, someone's entire day, year, or even life can change. In every heart, there's hope. I take the road less traveled, run free, unwind, unravel someplace outside with lots to do. Green trees, red rocks, and don't forget that blue sky. The sunshine, shining, sunshine, pouring on me. Think I might just stay a while. Fresh 15 minutes up on the second quarter clock. Dixie State trailing 7 0 here on the Trailblazer Football Network. We welcome in our friends at Grand Junction as well on the CMU Sports Network. First half numbers 104 yards of total offense for Dixie State, just 69 for Colorado Mesa. Guys, it's been a punt block return for a touchdown. It's been interceptions and short fields for the Mavericks, and now they're knocking on the door, trying to score their first offensive touchdown of the game. It's second down and goal from the Dixie State nine-yard line. What can the Trailblazers draw up here defensively? Yeah, you've got to stop the run. I mean, the, the Mavericks are only at five yards of passing through the air, so you've got to be able to stop the run and make Bollinger beat you. Bollinger, quarterback keeper, five, touchdown. And he did just that. Right on cue. Make Bollinger beat you. Quarterback keeper who was designed. Quarterback keeper took one step backwards and then right up the, the hole in the middle. Had Mestis blocking for him. One block and he's in the end zone. Nine-yard touchdown run for Bollinger. And it's 13-0 Colorado Mesa with 14.55 to go in the second on your Camping World scoreboard. And they did an identical play last week in the red zone against Black Hill State. They like to run it with the big... Big quarterback in the red zone, Bollinger, and he pays off right there. PAT from Ruiz Diaz is up and is through with 14.55 to go in the second. Colorado Mesa 14, Dixie State nothing. We'll take a 30 second timeout and come back on the Trailblazer Football Network. I got you right where I want you. I make this one, it's over. I win. No pressure. Bring it. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. Well, the more I think about it, guys, I've already referenced that 2016 matchup between Dixie State and Colorado Mesa. 
more I think about it, the more this game plays out. Punt return for a touchdown, an interception, tip drill interception leading to a touchdown. It feels just like that game in 2016 where Dixie State trailed 17 to nothing and then trimmed the lead to 17-14 by halftime and then came back to win that game 38-31. They're going to need some magic again today. Natoa fields it at the goal line, far side. He's angling from right to left, has a hole and is tripped up. And a flag flies in late at the 14-yard line of Dixie State. Dixie State. And that was Looks like they might be starting at the 20-yard line, but they may be backed up here. Is that flag sitting at the 14-yard line? And that was Jesse Rodriguez that brought him yeah, down the running back. That was a back, heck of a tackle. Who was able to bring him down and stop him from getting into that hole in some green grass. That flag came in extremely late. It was almost after the play was over, but we'll get the call here from the referee. Yeah, the referee threw that thing from the Colorado Mesa sideline to the right hash. And it was a During the kick, illegal wedge, 40 minutes. 32, 34, half the distance, first down. The legal wedge called against Dixie State. They called the numbers 32 and 34, but I. that would be Ma'a Natoa and Augustus Frazier. And I don't, we haven't seen Ma'a Natoa all season. That's Darman's brother. So they probably got that number wrong, but Augustus Frazier was probably in on that. Fourteen forty-nine to go. Another long field for the Trailblazers yep. after the the one they started on the first uh, the one the one yard line the possession before. They'll start on the their own eight yard line this time on first down. Sage Luongo starts around the right end, cuts it up about the left hat the right hash, excuse me, and he gets one yard. It'll be second down and nine. Fourteen forty to go. So our, our, one of our keys was one of the things we talked about for Dixie State was getting that run game go, going, guys, and they've tried but just haven't had a whole lot of success on the ground yet. How good has Nick Smith been? He gets to his ankles and a couple yards there for CJ Luongo, but Smith has been great getting in there in the trenches. Second down and eight, 14-20 remaining. CJ Luongo to this point, six carries, 21 yards, averaging three and a half carries, three and a half yards per carry. They go back to CJ around the right side, breaks free, 20, 25, cutting inside and his legs taken out across the 25 to the 27 yard line. Pickup of 17, 27 yards. The Trailblazers in business. And maybe that's what the Trailblazers needed to get their run game going. You see CJ Luongo does a great job of finding just the smallest of holes. And then when he gets into the open field, he can make small little cuts to get extra yards there. DC State will hustle back to the line. Read option. Not going to keep it this time. Across the 30, 35. Takes on a safety. He's still going. Across the 40, 45 and to the 46-yard line of Dixie State, a 19-yard pickup, and Keaton Mott punishing defenders. Beautiful read by Mott, last second, rips it out of the belly of C.J. Luongo, and everybody's still committed. That was a great fake, and then lowers his shoulder on a safety and keeps going, breaks two <laughs> tackles, <laughs> stiff that? arms. Goodness gracious, he put Justin White on his back. Wow. Great run by Keaton Mott with a little razzmatazz, hop skiddly do. Scoreboard says it's first down and 46, but I don't think it's first down and 46. That's where the ball is. Here's Sejay. He'll pick up one yard off tackle to the right side. Now they're going to spot it back. No gain. Second down and 10. Now they move it forward again. Can't make up their minds. It will be a gain of one. Second down and nine for the Trailblazers out. Good pursuit by Rowan. The nose tackle here came through two Trailblazer blockers to make the tackle. Second down and nine at the 47-yard line. Shotgun snap to Mott, empty backfield. Passing situation, open is Jalen Powell, makes the catch at midfield, high steps, and a hop skiddly do out of bounds at the 45-yard line of Colorado Mesa. Yeah, you see Jalen Powell just gets free on the sideline. A good job by Mott, one of the best balls he's thrown all game, and Jalen Powell gets out near the first down marker. A good pickup for the Trailblazers on second down. It'll be third down and one. I got to keep up with you guys on this hop, skiddly do stuff. I do. <laughs> 12-20 remaining. Low snap. Mott will bring it down. Sejay's got the first down. Needed one. Got the one. Colorado Mesa coach on the far side is arguing that they don't like the spots. But they're going to give Sejay Luongo the one yard necessary. And it's Alani Boys Barbecue first down. 
for the Trailblazers. Yeah, sometimes you just have to lower your head like Seiji Luongo does here and just push your way forward. You see he gets knocked by two different Mavericks defenders but has the forward momentum to get him to the first down marker. So the Mavericks 44-yard line, Dixie State. With the clock rolling at 11.53 to go, trying to cut into this two-touchdown lead. Allison's isolated on the top of the formation. And they'll give it back to CJ. He's free across the 40, 35-30, finds the sideline, 25-20, and knocked out of bounds at the 20-yard line of Dixie State. And a big pickup of 24 yards for CJ Luongo. And Dixie State into the true by Hilton red zone to the 19-yard line. And a great series so far by Luongo. It's what we've been calling for all game is get him going. In this series, he's been awesome. Great blocking up front, getting the linebackers, making it a little easier on him. But he's so shifty once he gets up in that second level, gets another first down. First down and 10 at the 19-yard line. Mott, play action with CJ. Dancing in the backfield, looking, looking. Will loft it to the end zone, and he's just chucking it up, getting rid of it, and a flag will fly after the play. And is that going against Dixie State? Is that going to be – I saw Haunga getting off the field and a couple Colorado Mason players holding their hands up. And this would be an absolute killer if it's an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. And you've seen it all season long, and the coaches have addressed it, and they're trying to fix it. In fact, Coach Peterson told us on Trailblazer Weekly a couple of weeks ago that said, look, you know, guys are just, they're not going to play. They're making that kind of penalty. And I think it's going against 60 State, guys. Personal foul. Late hit. Number 64. And it was, it was yeah. Haunga. Ref might cut out, but it is Haunga. And he came and he hit him after the play, after the ball was already in the air into the end zone. And those plays are just drive killers. I mean, the Trailblazers were moving the ball effectively. The drive started within, inside their own 10. They're now, we're up to the 20-yard line, and that just is a, is a drive killer. Moves you all the way back to the 34-yard line. It's now first and 25. You know, you just can't have plays like that, especially now when you're down 14 to nothing. You've got to have every yard uh, that you can get. Unfortunately, that's when you look back on this season, that's going to be one of the things you remember. Dixie State struggles to keep it between the whistles. Mott on first down, forced out of the pocket. He's going to run, 35, takes on a linebacker again, and then a, another player diving on. If you're going to call a late hit, you probably got to call that one, right? After Mott was already on the ground. In the name of protecting the quarterbacks, Mott, a good pickup down to the 25-yard line. And I love how Mott just keeps going forward, doesn't slide, lowers his shoulder to get extra yards. We see him tackled by a couple of guys. And that's, then that's an absolute late hit. You've yeah, got to make that call. You've got to make that call. If you're going to call it one way, you've got to call it the other. Second down and 15. Here's Mott, fires to the sideline. Jalen Powell makes the catch, gets the pylon, and it will be a touchdown. 24-yard pitch and catch. From Keaton Mott to Jalen Powell, and the Trailblazers have cut the deficit in half. Yeah, a great route ran by Jalen Powell, the 5'10 junior from Los Angeles, California, working on Nick Sissio in the secondary. Nick Sissio, Sissio looks like he may have just slipped as he tried to break on this ball, and a good back shoulder throw from Mott to Powell as he grabs it, turns around, finds that inside of the pylon, and the Trailblazers are off the deck and on the board. Heck of a play by Jalen Powell as he had to spin and wait for that one to get there and then get the pylon. The snap, the kick is up, and it's good. PAT number 34 for James Baird on the season, and Dixie State trails 14-7 on the board. With 10.24 to go on your Camping World scoreboard until halftime, 30-second timeout, and back on the Trailblazer Football Network. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat. Apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Hey, welcome back. 10.24 to go. Dixie State has cut the Colorado Mesa lead in half to 14 to seven. And guys, the Trailblazers march down the field. And despite the big penalty, they're able to cut the lead in half on a pass. Seven plays, 73 yards, 24 yard touchdown pass 
from Keaton Mott yeah. to Jalen Powell. And, and, it, and round, ran for a bunch of yards that series. CJ Luongo had a great drive. Keaton Mott ran it a couple times for big yards. And then the response after the back-breaking penalty to stay in the pocket, throw a strike to Powell, who had great footwork over there by the pylon to reel it in, get in the end zone. Here comes the ensuing kickoff. Baird puts a foot into it, end over end kick. It'll be fielded by Justin White, midfield of the two yard line, still center of the field, now angling left across the 25 to the 30. And the ball comes out and it falls right in the hands of a teammate. The ball flew into the air and Trey Windham was there to scoop it up. Two times the ball has been loose and Dixie State not able to get it. Yeah, sometimes it's just about the breaks you get and the Trailblazers not able to fall on the first fumble on the first possession of the game. This one you see here just met by two different Dixie State defenders. Looks like he would have been down anyway, but they don't call it. But the ball comes, pops up straight in the air and is grabbed by Trey Windham, a heads-up play by Windham, but unfortunately, unfortunate break for the Trailblazers, not able to get that, which would have been a momentum turner. Yeah, that definitely would have been one that, if official replay was available, Colorado Mesa would have wanted to be looking at it, saying our guy was down. Bollinger on first down, finds Anderson, and then is bumped out of bounds after a pickup of four yards on the play. Second down and six upcoming. They'll wind it. Clock will continue to roll. 10.02 to go. Secondary has been great tonight or today for Dixie State. Just a short little gain to their best receiver, but overall doing a great job on the deep ball and coming up and making tackles on the short stuff. On second down and five, a run up the middle, and it will get out to the 40-yard line, a pickup of three. It's Mestis out to the 40, third down and three upcoming. Mestis had a great drive on the previous possession. Not, uh, he, Trailblazers have not been able to stop him consistently all day today. That was one of the, the better plays they ran defensively to stop him just after a gain of about two or three yards. 9.25 and ticking. We do have immediate timeout available after the next score, the next punt. So we'll be ready for that with 9.17 to go in the second and third down and three. Here's Mestis, left side. He's got room. He's to the 50 into Dixie State territory, down to the 49-yard line. A pickup of 11 yards for Isaac Mestis. Needed only three, and he'll get 11 into Dixie State territory. And that's one of the challenges of this Dixie State defense. They love having the defensive ends out wide for the speed rush on third downs, but that creates a big hole when, De when uh, Hendrickson is pushed out for the Opposition's running back to fit in and get an easy first down. Lock rolling, 8.47. Remember, Dixie State will get the second half kickoff and a sack! A safety blitz for Darius Nash, and Bollinger is on his back. What a play by Darius Nash and a big loss. Well, we said they needed to win the trenches, and maybe this isn't part of that category, but they definitely needed to get to Bollinger in this game, and Darius Nash does just that. For not having a sack in last week's game, the Trailblazers get one in the second quarter of today's game, and a huge loss on first down. It sets up a huge second down and about 17, 18 yards for the Mavericks. And I'll tell you, Bollinger, lucky that he held onto the football on that one. He was moving it around. Second down, quick pass across the middle, incomplete. Looking for the tight end downfield. Was intended for Dagen Ranks, and it falls incomplete. There was a couple red jerseys in the area, but they couldn't get to it. Yeah, Ranks, their, I think, second leading receiver this year at the tight end position, but have been unable to connect, much like Dixie State with their tight end so far this game. Well, you see what a big hit like that does to yeah. a quarterback. The very next play, he's antsy to get rid of that football. Had more time than he thought he did, but that's why it's important to get in there. Third down and 19. Here's Bollinger. Pressure comes, forced out to his left. Will step up, hit as he throws. In complete downfield, and a flag going to fly. Please tell me they're not calling a roughing the passer penalty no. from way in the back. The flag is sitting at midfield, but the referee threw it from about 20 yards down the field. Now, I think they're going to get uh, – Anderson was on, his, was on his back when the pass was thrown. That must be gotcha. maybe a pass interference call is what they're going to say. But Interference or holding? Might be holding. Either you way. hope for holding because it's only 10 yards and they'd replay the down. Holding is not an automatic first down if I'm – so this will be a big call. They're discussing it now. I wonder if they're just saying that – is that that ball's not failed. catchable, though? The, the referee threw his hat. He threw his flag, and then he threw, dropped his hat at the 30-yard line. I mean, he threw the flag to the 50, which is only 10 yards downfield. Dixie State players are exchanging high fives right now. 
Long deliberation. And now it looks referees. like Colorado pl Mesa players may be moving a little bit. But we'll get the call. Nobody knows. During the play, holding number 36, defense. That results in a first down. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number six, 15 yard penalty, first down. So they're going to enforce both penalties. So you did have holding, and they called 36 on the hold, which would be Malini Tia. And I'm not sure if I saw Tia out there or not, but is he out there? Well, the, the hold was what Drayson described. Yeah. Just grabbing Anderson and throwing it down. I didn't get the number on the Dixie State player who well, They called it on 36, they, which would be Malini Tia, the freshman. I'm not sure if he's played yet this season. So it's going to be. They may have got that number wrong as well. Maybe 37. It's going to be have been 37. 10, yard, Rufus. 10 yards against Dixie State. Give them the automatic first down. 15 yards against Mesa on first down. So well, now it'll see, be. You see, I guess I need to know my rules better because I didn't know that that defensive holding was an automatic first down. I believe I believe it is anything to do with pass interference or gotcha. holding. It would make, I it think make it sense. Does uh, merit an automatic first down. Trailblazers, although they, they it is back to first down, they do get an extra five yards backfield, but now the obviously it's first and ten after the first down. First and ten. Now they're going to move it back one more yard, back to the 37-yard line. First down and ten for the Mavericks at their own 37 after all of that. And I'll be studying my rule book this week, guys. Three receivers set for Colorado Mesa. Receiver in motion from left to right. Here's Mestis, spins away from the first tackler, and he's across the 40, down to the 42-yard line. Call it a pickup of four yards for Mestis, and second down and six upcoming. What a run. He's very talented. He's got power, but he's got finesse as well, just like we talked about in the pregame show. He spun right out of Kyle Murray's hands. Yeah, and does a good job of finishing the run. Always seems like he's falling forward or has his momentum Going forward, he picks up five yards on first down. Second down and five, ball at the 42. Snap to Bollinger, fires to the far side, and it's complete. And Aaron Simpson was trying to make a play on that thing, and he overran it, and it gets right into the hands of Bradley Toussaint in a Colorado Mesa first down into Dixie State territory. Yeah, he was out leveraged to the outside and came well inside of where the ball was going to go, and an easy catch right at the sticks for the first down. Into Dixie State territory to the 49-yard line. Clock rolling at 7.08. They'll leave it with Mestis. Off tackle, left side. He's across the 45, down to the 43-yard line. A pickup of six. Yeah, Mestis just been their workhorse all game, a design counter. Fakes like he's coming to the right side of the formation, then busts it back to the left. Seems like he always gets about three or four yards before he's even touched on most plays. Snap to Mestis. It seemed like there was an awful lot of movement. And the ball came out, and they're going to say it was forced by the ground, which is the right call. And it will be a one-yard gain for Mestis. Third down and three upcoming. I'm telling you guys, like there was a lot of movement on that Maverick front at the start of that play. But as it stands, it's third down and three for the Mavericks at the Dixie State 37-yard line. Another third down for this Dixie State defense. They haven't been able to get off the field on the last couple of drives that have led to CMU touchdowns. See if they'll be able to get off the field here on third down. Here's Bollinger, third down and three. Pass across the middle, tight end, making the catch, and then his legs taken out by Aaron Simpson. It's Dagen Ranks, and it's a first down for the Mavericks inside the 35 down to the 31 yard line. And a big league play there by Bollinger. He got hit hard right up the middle. They sent pressure and he stood in there and threw a strike. They'll rush up to the line, hand off to Mustis. And he goes off to the left side. It spins away from a defender. He'll pick up four yards, second down at six. And Mustis just gets to the outside here, spins back towards the center of the field. It looked like this one might have been designed to go up the middle, but he decides to bounce it to the outside and was forced up the middle by a few Dixie State defenders. Clock rolling, 5.25 to go until halftime. Again, Dixie State will get the ball to start the second half. Bollinger to the sideline incomplete. Intended for Anderson. Ty Hill in coverage. And it will be another third down. Third down and six. Trailblazers brought pressure on that one and forced Bollinger maybe got rid of the ball a little bit more, a little bit faster than he thought he originally had time for. This one just 
out wide, a receiver not able to get to it. Two of five is Colorado Mesa today on third downs. And a credit to the Maverick offensive lineman. Dixie State bringing pressure, but really unable to penetrate and get through. This time they do, and they'll drop it out of the backfield. Mestis makes the catch, and he'll pick up two yards. That looked like a big game, but Bollinger had dropped back so far behind the line of scrimmage that it's only a one-yard gain, and it will be timeout. fourth down and five, and an injury timeout as Mestis is slow to get up. You hope he is okay. Injuries are a part of this game and such a rough game. But you just hate to see him on either side of the football. 5.06 remaining. Now he's up and he'll jog off the field. And there is immediate timeout available. Are they sending the teams to the sideline? No, they are not. Great recognition by Malaki Malaki on that play to recognize, turn around, and make the tackle from behind, short of the sticks. And they're not going to take the media timeout now. The question is, will they take it if this is a successful field goal attempt? I imagine they probably would. So here comes Ruiz Diaz. 9 of 11 on the season. His long is 51. This one from 43 yards left hash. They try to make it a two-score game again, and it's going to be offsides. The field goal is blocked, but it's not going to matter. Alex Lilliard's going to pick it up. And now here come the Trailblazers, and they're going to rumble the other way, but there's a flag on the ground. It's not going to matter. Offsides, and it was a fourth down and five, and Colorado May said the drive will be extended. There's another flag here in the middle of the field, more closer to where the ball was recovered. Obviously, the ball obviously is going to come back. It's going to be offsides, quite clearly offsides. It's, for it, Dixie that State. offsides play, regardless of what this other flag is, it's going to give a fresh set of downs. Correct. To Colorado Mason. I'm just wondering what this other flag could be. The State having a little trouble getting out of its own way. Wait for the official calls. Either way, Colorado Mason is going to have the football here. And the five yards on the offside penalty, like you mentioned, would be enough for the first down, which would keep this drive for the Mavericks alive. <laughs> if you're Coach Peterson at this point, you, probably, you might want to see if you can barter and say, hey, we'll give them the three points. Let, let's just wipe <laughs> away these penalties. Here comes the call from Gary Leeper. Offside. Defense, number 18. Bring the return, unsportsmanlike conduct, number five, defense. That'll be half the distance to the goal at first down. So it's offsides against Ty Hill, and then during the return, Alex Lilliard's going to get hit with an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Devastating, a clear and offsides. And they called it on the wrong player. It's, it's actually Aaron Simpson. And then on a play that really didn't even happen, they get another penalty on the well, return. I'd love to keep rolling this here. I, I, I'd love to see. I mean, Lilliard was the first player to it. Did he hit somebody after the play? I mean, what? Anyway, either way, first and goal for the Mavericks from the 11-yard line of Dixie State. And here's Bollinger, first down, rolling out to his left. He's going to try to keep it. It's upended. On the far sideline, inside the 10, just shy of the 5. And he's down where they're marking him. They're giving him the 6-yard line, guys. Looks like they're going to give him the 6. It'll be a pickup of 5. Second and goal. Bollinger there is there, there's a first down available, isn't there? Yeah. At the 1. Second and 5 from the 6-yard line. Your Dixie State, you're thinking turnover right here. At the Bollinger, here's Rodriguez. Second effort will get him down to the two-yard line. A pickup of three, third down and one. And if you're Colorado Mesa, you do have that first down available at the one-yard line. So you could probably run it up the middle and try to just do that twice in a row. Yeah, Maverick's got to be thinking about six here, though. Obviously, the first down is available, but they'd rather get it in the end zone for six. Bollinger, quarterback keeper, left side, he's in. Penalties. 
turnovers, punt block returns, you name it. Dixie State continues to shoot itself in the foot. 20 to, 20 to seven, Colorado Mesa leading with 3.26 to go in the second quarter. We will have the media timeout after this PAT. And Bollinger showing why they trust him so much in the red zone. Called to go out wide, reads it, cuts back against the grain and trots in for an easy score a second of the game. Ruiz Diaz said for the PAT. Again, like I was saying, I think Coach Peterson would have just given him the three points. The ensuing PAT is up. He, I think he missed it. No, he got it. Inside. Inside the right upright. 21-7. Dixie State trailing. Media timeout on the field. A 90-second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Football Network. Radio Dixie 91.3. We don't play that. Nope, not that. A big fat no there. That's what we play. And stuff like that. On St. George's only alternative, Radio Dixie 91.3. Oh, and from 9 till midnight, we play this. I need a one And this. Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. Actually, no, I'm not busy right now. Yeah, I can talk. I can talk. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, yes. you, your football buddy, your football buddy. You, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker, your cat jogger. With early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Dixie State, eight penalties for 79 yards already. Colorado Mesa just the one, and it was on a, a, a play where there was a penalty on both teams, and it's not even halftime yet. Colorado Mesa leading 21 to seven, not 20 to seven, 326 to go. Until halftime, can the Trailblazers, who will receive the second half kickoff, can they do something with 326 on the clock here? Juan Dantzler will chase it, goal line far side. He's at the five, 10. 15, trying to get outside and is brought down from behind, shy of the 20-yard line at the 17-yard line, and that is where Dixie State will take over. The good news for Dixie State is they're coming off their best series of the game. They were throwing it out wide. They were running it really well. Mont had a good game, or excuse me, a good series running it as well. So they've just got to keep that up. They've had a devastating half penalty-wise, but if they can go into the locker room with a one-possession game, that would be a huge win for Coach Peterson. They just got to keep it together this series. Yeah, game's certainly not out of reach. I mean, obviously, you get this uh, you get this last drive to end the half, and then you get the, the opening kickoff to begin the second half. I mean, if, if you score on both of them, obviously, it's a tie game. From that point on, it's anybody's game. And for your TV and Internet viewers, I think the our score bug may have lost connection with the scoreboard. We'll try to keep you updated on how much time is actually left. Slant route inside. Casey Allison makes the catch and turns the back and leans forward. He'll pick up nine yards on first down and 10 out to the 27 yard line. Second down and one upcoming. Clock rolling 3.05 to play. And that's the second time they've gone to Allison on first down. Both times he's been targeted. He's caught the ball. Let him get ahead of the chains now. Second and one. 2.52 to go now. 18 on the play clock. Snap to Mott on first down. He looks, surveys, fires Casey Allison. Makes the catch. He gets out to the 40 yard line and it's brought down out of bounds, and that will stop the clock while they spot the football out to the 40-yard line. Yeah, good route here ran by Allison. Just about a 10-yard curl towards the sideline, working on Justin White of the Mavericks, and grabs it there, brings it in around the 40-yard line, and sets up a first down and 10 from the 40. Ball is placed and clock rolling again, 225 until halftime. Mott, pressure comes, and he has to just dump it into the field, incomplete. And now we've got some extra... <laughs> 
extracurriculars. The ball bounced right into the gut of Mason Newton, and then Taylor Alvarez tried to rip the ball out of his hands. He just got to just disengage and get back to the next play. No need to try to draw another flag. 2.21 to go. Clock is stopped. Jalen Powell in motion from left to right. Now three receivers to the right side. Here's Mott firing to Dewan Dantzler. Makes the catch at the line of scrimmage. He gets across the 40 out to the 45-yard line. A pickup of five. And it will be third and five from the 45-yard line. Clock ticking at 2.10 to go. Yeah, this one was just uh, sent Powell out in motion. Set him up as a blocker. And then just a little screen pass to Dantzler. Gets a, behind a couple of blocks led by Powell. As I mentioned, grabs five yards. Here's Mott. Pressure comes and he's hit and going down. A sack on third down and five. And now Colorado Mesa with two timeouts will probably use one here. At least I would be shocked if it didn't. And Ma just staring down his first progression and it doesn't happen, he's just staring him down. Kind of deer in the headlights there and a big hit put on him by Rowan who's had a great game on the interior defensive line for the Mavericks. And now Colorado Mesa gonna call a timeout. They let about 15 seconds tick off the clock and then call the timeout. They'll have one more. 1.34 to go. We'll take a 30-second timeout before the punt, just a 30, and come right back on the Trailblazer Football Network. There is a place where rocks bleed and nature blushes on a battlefield green with envy, where dimples determine destiny and a tiny wooden tee holds the outcome in the balance. There is a place where friends are opponents and opponents are friends. Where the prize is elusive, the conquest is captivating, and the score isn't settled till the drinks are down. There is a place. One thirty-four remaining until halftime. Dixie State facing a fourth and 15. As Keith Mott takes the sack, and now a punting situation. Mott will come back onto the field limping a little bit, it looks like. And he's going to punt the ball away. Colorado Mesa won't have anybody back to receive this punt. I think they're going to try to bring the house. And Colorado Mesa must not know that for the first four games of this season that Keaton Mott was the primary punter. They're expecting a fake here. Mont Mott going to punt the football away. Short kick will bounce and roll inside the 30. It's going to get a Dixie State bounce right at the end. It'll roll inside the 30, inside the 25, down to the 28-yard line of Colorado Mesa. The Mavericks will have a 72 uh, excuse me, a 77-yard field with 119 to go. And they're certainly capable with, with the timeout and a minute 19 to go. They have the deep threats, and uh, Bollinger has the arm to be able to throw this downfield. Wouldn't be surprised to see him uh, take a few shots maybe early in this series and see if they can't get some of the Trailblazers' defensive secondary napping. Two receivers split out wide, make that three split out wide left for Bollinger. One receiver to the near side. The back is Mestis. Bollinger pulls it down and he's going down. A sack for Dixie State, the second of the day. Good play by Brennan Miller, who's had a tough game in the run game from that interior line position. He gets loose and makes a play on a little twist stunt on the defensive line for the sack. Clock rolling, 55 seconds remaining. Colorado Mesa with one timeout remaining. You gotta wonder here, they just run the ball and then just try to get to halftime. Trailblazers would love to see as many plays as possible run. Play clock down to seven and six. I think this will be the last play of the second half. They'll give to Mestis, he's free across the middle, the 30. And brought down shy of the first down, but with 30 seconds remaining in the second quarter, that should just about do it. 
Colorado Mesa will not have to snap the football if it does not elect to. We're down to 15 and 13, 12. Maybe they will take one more shot at this. And then flag flies. And what do we got? False start or offsides? I think you're going to have uh, a procedural penalty. I think it's going to be too many men in the backfield for Colorado Mesa. False, False start. start. Number 87, offense. That foul occurred under one minute, which requires a 10, ten second, second runoff, runoff. halftime. That will take us to halftime. Colorado Mesa, said, Colorado Mesa said, to heck with this conservative stuff. We're going to try one more thing. And why not? That'll take us to the half. Colorado Mesa 21, Dixie State 7. And guys, quick hitter thoughts before we go to break. I mean, to be trailing only by two scores at this point, yeah. I think you feel like is an accomplishment because Dixie State just cannot get out of its own way. It's amazing. They, they had probably one, I guess the scoring drive, one solid good drive the whole first half. Each of the three times that Colorado Mesa scored, they were gifted it in some way along the way to get to the score by Dixie State, which is which is inexcusable at this point in the season in this big of a game against a rival. They've got to obviously tighten up the screws a little bit in the locker room for the second half. Trouble they have to do a better job against the run. My ass is, they did do a better job in that second quarter, but my ass is still was able to get a, a large number of yards on the ground. Up to this point, Bollinger hasn't really beat you. You've not got a whole lot of yards through the air. You've done a pretty good job in your defensive secondary. If you can limit their run game and force Bollinger to throw it through the air and see what plays they can make, I think that's got to be the, the recipe for success in the second half. This is a very telling stat before we go to the halftime break. Dixie State outgaining Colorado Mesa 230 to 141, and that, yet you trail in the football game 21 to 7. The Trailblazers will try to figure things out at halftime and try to come back for a win for the fourth time this season when trailing at halftime. Dixie State trailing 21 to 7, 30 minutes of football in the books. We're going to take the full five minute timeout. We'll come back with the Seven Oaks Jewelers halftime report right here on your Trailblazer Football Network. You know, we may have started out small, but we were great. Families and fans rallied behind their team. The community cared, and everyone showed up to cheer. Now, we're bigger than ever. Dixie State is going to the Vision One. But at the end of the day, it's the community and fans that make us great. Whether you give five bucks or a thousand, every dollar, every seat in the stands, every one of you can help blaze our trail to Division I athletics. Because this is our team. Hey Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! For over a century, Dixie State University has been shaping the trailblazers of tomorrow by providing a culture of active learning, active life. With a paradigm of real-world experience mixed with cutting-edge technologies and rich traditions, we provide one of the most affordable educations in the West set against the most stunning backdrop on the planet. Where do you find the titans of classical music in St. George?
classical music on Radio St. George 100.3 FM. Where do you find the legends of jazz? Evenings on Radio St. George 100.3 FM. You know, we may have started out small, but we were great. Families and fans rallied behind their team. The community cared. And everyone showed up to cheer. Now, we're bigger than ever. Dixie State is going to the Vision One. But at the end of the day, it's the community and fans that make us great. Whether you give five bucks or a thousand, every dollar, every seat in the stands, every one of you can help blaze our trail to Division I athletics. Because this is our team. play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. For over a century, Dixie State University has been shaping the trailblazers of tomorrow by providing a culture of active learning, active life. With a paradigm of real-world experience mixed with cutting-edge technologies and rich traditions, we provide one of the most affordable educations in the West set against the most stunning backdrop on the planet. Welcome back inside the broadcast booth at Trailblazer Stadium, Dixie State. Trailing it 21 to seven as we enter the Seven Oaks Jewelers halftime report. Carrick Sangler, Andy Thompson with us, and Jason Ball will rejoin us soon here inside the Seven Oaks Jewelers halftime report. And Andy, this is a game we talked about it throughout the whole break. It's it's uh, it's kind of odd to see a, a two touchdown deficit when you're outgaining your opponent yeah. by nearly 100 yards in total offense, but there's a couple of numbers that jump out almost automatically you move down the, the stat sheet a couple of lines from the total offense, and it's the penalties. Eight penalties for 79 yards and penalties that, that extended the Colorado Mesa the last drive specifically, and maybe they still got a field goal. Maybe it's a 17-7 game, but not a two-touchdown game. But then you have the, the punt block return for a touchdown. You have a, a tip drill interception right off the hands of a receiver that led to a Colorado Mesa touchdown. It When you look at it and you actually think – about the things that Colorado uh, Dixie State wanted to do in this football game, they're doing them to a degree and then just shooting themselves in the foot in, in the other facets of the game and kind of erasing the hard work they're putting in to to uh, implement and to execute that game plan. It's just one of those frustrating yeah. games where you look at it and you go, how on earth are we losing this game? Oh, I know, penalties, turnovers, and just poor execution on certain facets of the game. Yeah, and, and what's got to be frustrating for Trailblazer fans is this has been a rivalry like we talked about for 10 years. You, it's a one-sided rivalry, and the Mesa's won eight and only lost two. But this year, Dixie State comes in playing a young Colorado Mesa, Mesa team. There's no Easton Salem anymore. Uh, they've got eight sophomores playing on offense, one freshman on offense, nine underclassmen. This is a team you could compete with and potentially beat here at home, but in the most pivotal plays, you're, you're holding on a big pass play, you're getting a, a punt blocked, and then that dagger offsides on a field goal that turned into a touchdown. Just inexcusable stuff uh, in a year that Dixie State, you know, thinks that they can contend for the top of the RMAC. They're not playing like it right now through two quarters. Drayson Ball rejoining us now in the broadcast booth. And, and, and Drayson, we got your quick hitter thoughts before the break, but when you look at that stat sheet, I mean, outgaining the opponent – but then there's these other things. What can you add to, to the uh, analysis that, that Andy 
just gave us. Yeah, I mean, I think you've done a good job. I think in that second quarter, you did a better job on Mestis. Uh, you know, in the first quarter, I think he had, uh, you know, somewhere between 60 or 70, 50 or 60 yards. And, and I think, you know, he was able to get into some space. You did a better job on him in that second quarter and, and limited him really uh, to not a whole lot of yards there. And then, like I said, Bollinger is the type of guy who's, who's a good game manager, but they really use the run to set up the pass. And he's done good jobs, a good job at times, but only 30 yards through the air. Uh, for uh, Mess, or excuse me, for uh, Bollinger, and uh, you know, for this offense that really kind of relies on the run. If you can take out their best uh, portion of their offense, which is their run game led by Mestis, and force Bollinger to beat you through the air, we've seen the Trailblazer secondary has played tremendous at times today. They've stayed with their receivers downfield. They've made them complete short passes, you know, to the sidelines, kept them in front, and been been able to tackle them in the open field. So, I think you're playing very, very well right now. In your defensive secondary, if you can limit that run game with Mestis uh, and force them to pass it through the air on you know third down and long situations, that's going to be the key defensively. Obviously, your offense has been pretty successful. You've just been shot in the foot by a couple of, of careless penalties. You got to be able to clean that clean that up. We've said it multiple times on this broadcast and on our Trailblazer Weekly Show. You're not going to be able to beat the good teams of the conference, the Colorado School of Mines, the CSU Pueblos, the Colorado Mesas. If you're going to continue to make uh, silly mistakes and penalties like that, you got to be able to keep uh, keep your head in the game and keep it between the whistle. Coming into this game, and I don't mean to pile on, but it certainly is a storyline of this football game. Coming coming into this game, Dixie State was ranked uh, in the last out of 166 NCAA Division II football teams, 155 in in fewest penalties. That means that out of 166 football teams. There's only, and they're tied at 155, so there's really only eight or nine teams in all of Division II that have committed more penalties and have more penalty yards wow. than Dixie State. And it's been that way a, uh, off and on for the last couple years yeah. as well, but you just hope maybe with the new staff that would change a little bit. You know, as we've talked to Coach Peterson, it's hard to build a new culture. It's hard to do those things. Uh, the tough part is that some of the guys committing penalties are, are new guys that have come, yeah. you know, w for the new staff, and so you, you can't really – you know, throw carryover under the bus for that. And, and it's something that they know that, that needs to be fixed. They're trying to address it. They're trying to fix it. And, and I think it's, some, it's something that, that takes time. But eventually you've got to, you know, figure something out to where this doesn't consistently happen each and every game. And, you know, it kind of feels like a, a very sour <laughs> Seven Oaks Jewelers halftime report to this <laughs> point. But when you're at halftime and you feel like you should either be tied or perhaps even, you know, have a lead – in this game, you're down by two scores, and it's clearly because of things that you have control of. You have control over whether you jump off sides. You have control over whether the, there's a low snap or, or on a punt or whatever. You have control over whether you hit somebody after the whistle or whether you hold somebody on a passing play. You have control over that. So you like to talk about, hey, just worry about the things you can control where those are the things that are keeping Dixie State out of this football game to this point. Yeah, and you know, there's a certain allotment for effort penalties that you've got to factor in. You might have a, a hold on the offensive line uh, once or twice a game that you kind of allow, but the uh, fourth and five, you know, you held them to a field goal, they're in the red zone, and you're jumping off sides. That is just a penalty that is excruciating to bear for the coaching staff. The personal fouls are hitting after the whistle. There's never any time for that, and no allotment for, for those type of penalties yet. That is, you know, what's put Dixie in a hole here, 21-7 at half. Let's take a look at our quality in keys to the game. Kind of look back at those and grade out how the Trailblazers have done to this point. Uh, we talked about needing to stop the run of Colorado Mesa. So far, yeah. the Mavericks, 111 yards on 25 carries. Uh, Mestis with 63 carry, 63 yards. Jesse Rodriguez with 40 yards. I mean, you'd like to hold your opponent under 150 if you can. Dixie State this season has not lost a game when holding its opponent under 150 yards of rushing. Um, with 111 for Colorado Mesa already, that may be, I don't know, the way they ran in the first half. They're gonna, If they double that up, you're pushing 250 yards of rushing yards so you got to be a little bit better with yeah. that because then the run's working it's not you're not you know forcing Bollinger to make decisions you're not forcing receivers to make catches and they've got to just be a little bit better against the run I think in the second half yeah I think I think they're right on the margin of success as far as stopping the run Mestis had a had a good first half but they contained it there was no big long runs 
Um, so I think they're right on the edge of success. They need to tighten it up maybe a little bit uh, in the second half. But uh, so far, I think it's so good. And then you look at the other stuff, like you were saying, Carrick, no blown coverages. They've been pretty much 100% of that, right, yeah. Grayson? So yeah. uh, they're, they're doing a good job with the keys. It's just, you know, one of the big keys that's not on there is just the dang penalties. And not only that, your offense has, has moved the ball well. you got 230 yeah. yards total offense. Your run game to this point has looked solid. I gave it a, a good B plus or maybe even an A minus. Already over 103 yards of total uh, yards gained on the ground. It's Angel Luongo, 10 carries for 65 yards. Keaton has had a couple of good runs, five attempts for 20 yards, a couple of sacks, obviously bringing those numbers down. But I think your run game, you've established your run game. You've looked good through the air at times. Keaton Mott's been able to stay in the pocket. He's gotten some time uh, on multiple different occasions and been able to deliver to the football to open receivers. Your run game's coming along. If you can limit the, limit the amount of mistakes and continue to execute offensively, and then obviously we talked about the, the, the defense of stopping the run, you should have a good chance in the second half. This is the Seven Oaks Jewelers Halftime Report. We're going to take a three-minute timeout. When we come back, we'll wrap it up, give you our final thoughts, and then take a look at a few scores around the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. Three-minute timeout and back with the Seven Oaks Jewelers Halftime Report. Hey, what's Come up, man? man? Hey, good, good, good. You played before, right? Oh, absolutely. It's okay. all state, high school. Good. Let's run some routes. Give me a post route. All right, let's do it. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. Touchdown! Oh, wow. Did you see that? Whoa, 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 we scored? Yeah, we scored. We're going to the playoffs. I can't believe I missed that. Every time I'm buzzed, I spend too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. Okay, you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. I'm gonna need that back. No. Nope. Kevin! There is a place where the desert comes alive, where rain breaks forth from solid stone and gardens spring from blistered rock. There is a place with enough color to make a rainbow jealous, where boulders are bigger than buildings and cliffs are higher than clouds. There is a place that will straighten your step Tighten your grip, widen your eyes, and open your jaw. There is a place. Honorary Forest Ranger Betty White here, lending a hand to my dear friend Smokey Bear. Because for 75 years, he's only said, Only you can prevent wildfires. But there's a lot more to say. Like, if you park your car on tall, dry grass, the hot exhaust pipe can start a wildfire. So keep the animals safe, especially the cute shirtless one. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. I got you right where I want you. If I make this one, it's over. I win. No pressure. Bring it. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. Welcome back inside of the Seven Oaks Jewelers Halftime Report. Let's give you some scores from around the conference right now. Five other games in progress. Uh, a game in Durango, Colorado. CSU Pueblo leading Fort Lewis 21-13 to with 3-10 remaining in the third wow. quarter. And, and Fort Lewis has just scored that touchdown. So they may have to try to get the onside kick. Who knows? We'll keep you updated on that score. Um, 
Black Hill State. Uh, that's that. Those stats haven't updated yet. Um, I was gonna say, but South Dakota Mines is beating Colorado School of Mines. No, they're not. That's that's the wrong link that the conference schedule has linked up. There's the right one. Colorado School of Mines, 28 to seven, at halftime over South Dakota Mines, and then New Mexico Highlands is trailing Shadron State 14 to nothing at halftime. Those are your RMAC updates. We'll keep an eye on that Pueblo Fort Lewis score as we go throughout the rest of this game. Second half, just about underway. We turn the crowd mic back up. The Trailblazers will try to come back in this one for the fourth time this season. Coming into this game, Dixie State, when trailing at halftime, is three and two. They'll try to come back in this one. Here we go, back deep to receive for Dixie State is Xavier Smith and Darman Natoa. And set to put a foot into this one is Blake Moore for Colorado Mesa. The ball is teed up, and it's going to be returnable. Darman Natoa, two-yard line left side. He angles to the right, middle of the field, now 10-yard line. 15, spinning to the 20-yard line, and it's brought down in the center of the field. Some extracurriculars. No flags thrown, but again, you've got to be able to just disengage after those plays. Dixie State will take over at its own 21-yard line. Yeah, and I think if you're the Trailblazers, you've got to come out right now and you've got to make a statement. You, you've kind of been pushed around a little bit uh, so far in this uh, the first half of this game. You've got to come out after halftime, make some adjustments, come out and punch them in the mouth and, and make a statement that you're here to compete and you're not going to let the Mavericks run away with this one on your home field. Dixie State trailing 21 to 7, 14 to 53 to go here in quarter number three. First possession of the second half, Keaton Mott still at quarterback. Hands off to Sage A. Luongo up the middle across the 25, diving ahead to the 27 yard line. A pickup of six for Sage. You'll take that. All Absolutely. Sage had a great second quarter and like seeing him get going here on the first play in the second half. Just right up the middle. Good push by the front of that Dixie State front. Four receivers for the Trailblazers right now. Two split out to either side, lined up behind one another. Second down and five officially. Play action. Swing it out to the far side and incomplete. Keaton Mott had Casey Allison but threw it at his knees, and Casey couldn't make the catch. It'll be third down and five. Yeah, that's one of those plays where you just want to try to get the ball into your playmaker's hands as soon as you can. This one just thrown out wide to Allison. Ball was thrown a little bit low. He was going to try to keep off the, the block there, maybe try to make a guy miss, but not able to bring that one in. And it'll force third down and four for the Trailblazers on their first possession in the second half. Clock stopped at 14-18. Dixie State trailing 21-7. On the Camping World scoreboard, play clock at 10. Mott looking to the sideline. Four receivers again. Longo at the right hip. Play clock at five. At three. And the snap with three. Mott. Steps up in the pocket. He's going to run for it. 30, 35, slides at the 40-yard line. And they're going to, well, they're going to say his backside touched the ground at the 31-yard line. Good so job at by. 36, excuse me. Good job by Adib here on this right side. And he may have, yeah, just did enough there not to get called for holding, but create a hole for Mott to get the first down. I don't like the spot because it looked like his backside was down at about the 38-yard line. They've got it back at the 36. I know it's only two yards, but. First down and 10 for Dixie State. I'll leave it with Sage Reed read option. And he fights out of one tackle. And then we'll pick up two yards. How on earth did he get those two yards? Second down and eight. Ball out to the 38-yard line. And Luongo now up over 70 yards on the ground. And he's having a good game so far to this point. Uh, Trailblazers have not had a 100-yard rusher so far this season. Sage Luongo inching his way closer and closer to that century mark. 13-20 to go. Play action, Mott looking for Dantzler, and he threw it way over his head and out of bounds. It was a kind of a 10 yard and then out to the sideline, and Mott threw it out of bounds. If, if DeJuan Dantzler was seven foot six, if Sean Bradley would have been running that route, he might have been able to make that catch, guys. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, or or Taco. Ke Taco fall. Taco yeah. fall. Keaton Mott just kind of pressured here up the middle. The pressure came late, was forced to get rid of it. 
Third down and eight. Dixie State facing a third down. Pass to the far sideline. Jalen Powell makes the catch over the shoulder and then finds his way past the marker and out of bounds for a first down out to the 48-yard line of Dixie State. Big league throw from Ma, one of his best of the day from the right hash, throwing it across the field right at the sticks. Beautiful throw and catch. On first down, back to Sage. He's free across the 50 to the 45 of Colorado Mesa. A pick down of a pickup of eight, seven yards on the play. Trailblazers continue to go back to CJ Longo. They may have found something in the run game. He's uh, been able to pick up positive yardage on all of his carries so far on this series, setting the Trailblazers up inside the 45. Mott, play action this time, hit as he throws, passes complete for a first down to Casey Allison, and he took a hit. But Mott hung in there and delivered for the first down. Yeah, Nick Smith coming off this left edge, hits him hard right at the stomach with his arm. But good for Mott, just stays in there, flings it before he gets nailed for a first down. Sage Luongo, season long, is 89 yards on the ground last week against Shadron State. He's got 79 yards now, looking for that century mark for the first time this season. Mott on first down, has time. He's going to go to the end zone. Man is there. Can he get it? He can. Catch is made. Casey Allison, touchdown. 38-yard toss from Keaton Mott to Casey Allison and the Trailblazers back in the end zone. Yeah, what a great fade pass here from Keaton Mott. Just does a good job. Sometimes you try to throw this one a little bit too hard or throw it on a line. This one he gets air underneath it, puts the ball where only his man catches it, Lead is, leads him perfectly. Casey Allison makes a great diving catch and lands right Amazing into throw. the end zone. A good throw and an even better catch on Casey Allison's part. James Baird for the PAT. Dixie State trailing 21-13, 11.57 to go, trying to make it 21-14. A low snap. Hammond gets the ball down, and Baird knocks it through. Dixie State cuts the lead to one touchdown, 21-14, and that's the way to start the quarter. Trailblazers back within a touchdown. 30-second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Football Network. You can achieve a lot using your imagination. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to brag, but... Wait, who's that? And why is she all over these achievement awards? But with STEM, the sky's the limit. Shaboom! Use STEM to envision. Okay, I'm seeing it. Yeah. Invent. Got any ideas? I've got a few, actually. And create a better world. Told you she's super smart. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. Looking back to Trailblazer Stadium, 11.57 to go. Dixie State takes the opening possession of the second half. And the Trailblazers move down the field. Nine plays, 79 yards, just 2.56 off the clock. And Andy, back within a touchdown. Absolutely, and I think one of the big highlights of this year for Dixie State has been third quarters. They'll go there scoring by quarter. They're averaging 30 and 40 and 40 in other quarters. But in the third quarter, they've scored over 100 points so far this year. And a lot of credit goes to the coaching staff for adjustments they make in the locker room. Not only have they been scoring points in the third quarter, 101 so far this season, they've also only allowed 21 opponent points in the third quarter. Look for that to play a key role here today. It'll be Nick Sissio on the return. And he is hit and brought down across the 25 to the 28-yard line. And that is where Colorado Mesa will take over at its own 28-yard line. Again, nine plays, 79 yards, 256 off the clock. And when you're down two touchdowns, it certainly helps to score quickly. Now, if you, you get a stop, get off the field, you have an opportunity to go down and maybe tie the game with plenty of time left here in the third quarter. We saw the offensive adjustments. What can the defense draw up for Dixie State on this first CMU possession of the third quarter? It's Bollinger at quarterback, and Mestis will take the handoff on first down around the left end, trying to get the sideline, and he'll get there and is knocked out of bounds. And he will pick up, we'll call it six yards on the play, second down and four upcoming from the 34-yard line. Yeah, you see the speed of Mestis here, just able to get around a few Dixie State defenders to get to the sideline and get a couple extra yards. You see three different Trailblazer defenders chasing him there. He's fast enough to be able to get to the sideline and pick up an extra yard or two. Mestis had a productive first half, and he's knocking on the door of 100 yards as well. And a sack as Bollinger trying to get back to the line of scrimmage, 
And he did just get back there, so maybe it goes for no gain and not an official sack, but third down and five. It looked like yeah. there may have been a hold right yeah, there. Look Darius at that. Darius Nash. Nash is being completely held by Caden Sink, the sophomore offensive lineman, right in front of the official. He's, no he's had a lot of success on that Man. safety blitz and had a shot at a sack, but it said just forced one. And you would have been looking at third and ten instead of third and five. I mean, the jersey came off of the shoulder pads and everything. I don't know what more you need. Snap the Bollinger. He's going to try to keep it around the left end, diving for the first down, and he's going to be one yard shy, at least by the initial marking of this and spot of this football. And he is short. It'll be fourth down and one, and here comes the punting unit. The defense does its job. Yeah, the Trailblazers, uh, excuse me, the Mavericks on, uh, on third down were three of seven in that first half. The Trailblazers able to force a third down stop here and get their offense back out onto the field. A good way to start the second half. You scored a touchdown on your first possession. You get a three and out on the Mavericks' first possession. You get your offense back out onto the field. Hopefully you can get this game tied up. And watch out, Xavier Smith, given the chance for a return, can light the fireworks. Mestis, the punt is away. It will send Xavier Smith back. He checks where the defender is, makes the catch, takes a first step backwards, and then he'll be brought down at the 20-yard line of Dixie State. The Trailblazers have an 80-yard field. Smith had an opportunity at the return, couldn't make the first man miss. But Dixie State has the football back with 9.49 to go in the third and trailing just by one score. And a really confident Keith Mott coming out onto the field after last drive. He was throwing it out wide to the edges. He threw it down the field really well. He used pretty much the entire field on that last drive to get that touchdown. We'll see how much they let him throw it this next series. Has gone final in Durango. CSU Pueblo ekes out a 21-13 win. Wow. On the road. I was, we talked about it in the pregame. Durango or Fort Lewis always plays Pueblo tough in Durango, and they did it again today. Sage on first down, trying to bounce outside, can't get to it. Whistle rings out. And he will go for a loss of one. Second down and 11. Yeah, Sage Longo just not able to get the edge here. Is this one you see? He had to try to bounce it outside and just was never able to get the edge like he wanted to. A couple of Mavericks were there to force him outside and then bring him down for a loss of one. 9.25 to go in the third. And if you're Dixie State, you'd love to go even this thing up on this possession and say, hey, it's a whole new game. Jalen Powell in motion, the receiver from left to right. Mott is looking his way, hit as he throws, has the tight end, and he can't make the catch. And Keaton Mott took a vicious hit from the blind side. Pass is incomplete. Mott is back up and it's third down and 11. Yeah, the Mavericks just sent four. Mott looked like he didn't see that blindside pressure. Like you said, Carrick just gets rid of it before he gets nailed. And once again, just off the fingertips of Hess, hasn't been able to connect. Well, it was Grayson Matalas getting around Taylor Alvarez on that left end. So here we go, third down and 11. Can Dixie State convert? Mott fires across the center of the field, tipped in, incomplete. Off the hands of Casey Allison, would have been a tough catch after the tip. A couple of white jerseys, had an opportunity at a pit, couldn't get it. Dixie State will punt it away. And he got drilled. Allison got drilled high here by Sissio, trying to make a big play athletic move here by Mott to try to zing it in across his body. Mm. Could have been a pick. I don't know if Allison's foot may have come up and kicked the ball there at the very end. Keaton Mott will have to punt, standing inside his own five-yard line. And these ones always make you hold your breath just a little bit. Mestis standing back at his own 40. Low snap, Mott will get it away. A high end-over-end -end kick. It'll bounce inside Trailblazer territory and roll out to midfield. And... It'll be right at midfield. Colorado Mason will take over at the 50, and we are going to take the media timeout of the third. 8.56 to go in the third. Dixie State trailing 21-14, 90 second timeout, and back on the Trailblazer Football Network. Where do you find the titans of classical music in St. George? Classical music on Radio St. George, 100.3 FM. Where do you find the legends of jazz? Evenings 
on Radio St. George 100.3 FM. Hey, Kevin, you thinking about retirement? I'd love to, but I'm pretty busy with all this. Yeah. Hey, let's meet our retirement coach, Avo. A is for taking action. Not anxiety? No, Kevin, you're going to be fine. You sick? Barely. V is for variety. And you dance. Sort of. <laughs> Come on. O's for optimize your savings. Let Avo lead the way. Visit aceyourretirement.org today. Nice. For over a century, Dixie State University has been shaping the trailblazers of tomorrow by providing a culture of active learning, active life. With a paradigm of real world experience mixed with cutting edge technologies and rich traditions, we provide one of the most affordable educations in the West set against the most stunning backdrop on the planet. And out of the timeout, Red Hat did not stay on the field long enough and messed this on first down. We'll take it three yards around the right end, and it'll be second down and seven for the Mavericks at the Dixie State 47. Like we said in the halftime break, Trailblazers have to do a better job of containing Mestis already on the day, going over 70 yards of rushing. You got to be able to hold him to maybe see if they can hold him under 100 yards and force the Mavericks to beat them through the air. 8.20 to go in the third quarter and ticking. And off to Mestis, he's clogged up up the middle and gets around the left end, evades one tackler, and then is brought up down after another pickup of three. It'll be third down and four. Great effort by Hendrickson. Oh, to he almost got him. Dive and hit his cleat, but good job by the front of Dixie State to clog up the middle. There was nowhere to go. He ran into a wall, but then just broke contain a little bit over here on Hendrickson, who committed too much inside. Almost got him. Good hurdle. Another third down for the Mavericks. They were their three of eight so far in the game. The Trailblazers were able to get off the field on the previous third down. See if they can do the same here. Third down and four. What does CMU opt to do here? Through the air or on the ground? You'd love to see Dixie State get an interception. It's been a while. Bollinger drops back, fires across the middle, and it's incomplete. Batted down by Alex Lilliard. If he had turned around, he could have picked that ball off. But it's incomplete. It's fourth down. Pass was intended for Peter Anderson. Yeah, just thrown into double coverage by Bollinger. Uh, Anderson was covered by Darius Nash over the top and Alex Lilliard underneath. And uh, you see the pass going here just broken up by Alex Lilliard. Uh, kind of a questionable thro throw to throw it into double coverage. But a good job by the Trailblazers secondary to knock that ball down. Offense is still on the field. This could be a potentially huge momentum swinging play. You risk giving up Dixie State great field position if you don't get Direct it. Snap. It's going to be a pooch punt. It's going to be a pooch punt. You're right. Direct snap, pooch punt to Mestis, and it's going into the end zone. Or no, it's going to bounce directly to the side. Will it get into the end zone? It touched the goal line. Yep. Or are they going to mark it down at the one? Nope. Touchback. 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 Yep. I think, uh, I don't know if you're for sure if it hit the line, but uh, I believe Peter Anderson was touching the goal line yes. when he fielded the ball. So either way, if you're touching any part of that white line on the goal line when you come in contact with the ball first. Oh, it touched the line. It did touch the oh, line Great there. look. Either way, probably is going to be set up at the 20-yard line for their third drive of this second half. I believe that's Kyle down there on that camera that got that great look. Great shot. Great shot. CEC. At a great, perfect time to give a shout out to our CEC TV crew. We like to think the best video production in the conference and one of the best in the country. Mott, play action on first down, rolls out to his right, fires sideline. Powell gets the catch. Did he wow. get his foot down? He did. How on earth? A pickup of eight out to the 28 yard line. Powell's not very tall. He just runs 5'10", and somehow was able to get the foot back down to the lake, to landed, the ground. Landed pretty hard on his butt, was just trying to shake it off a little bit, but went up high for that one. And beautiful catch up high. Look at how, look at that vertical by Powell. And just gets the toe right there. Another Holds great with one hand from our as CEC down TV and, crew. That's, that's, good toe. Toe. that's the shot of the year right there. Beautiful shot. 
Mott will swing it to Dewan Dantzler. We've got a halfback pass. Dantzler's going to have to keep it 25-30 and out towards the 35-yard line. He's got the first down. <laughs> a broken play. It was supposed to be a swing pass and then have Dantzler pass it downfield. But he coverage downfield. Pressure was there. He says, all right, I'll go for the first down anyway. Yeah, had some pressure there from the Mavericks who weren't fooled at all. That's Grayson Matalos who was uh, trying to bring him down, but a good job by Dancer to be able to avoid that tackle and push forward for the first down. Yeah, rare missed tackle there yes. by Matalos. You see, that's not like Matalos to miss a wide open, open field tackle, but they see State will take it, the chains move, Alani Boys Barbecue first down. Mott, read option, he's gonna keep it around the right end. He's at the 40, tripped up behind the 45, no, to the 45 yard line, a pickup of 13 yards and another Lonnie Boys barbecue first down for the Trailblazers. And great patience there by Mott to allow Natoa to get up and push this linebacker out of the way for him, or safety, sorry, and allows him to get the first down. The Trailblazers starting to find something on the ground, fellas. And then they're spritzing in the pass every now and then. Mott will give the Natoa across the line of scrimmage. Forward progress will get him three yards out to the 48-yard line. It'll be second and seven for the Trailblazers. And Dylan Tate read this play beautifully. He uh, starts from the weak side of the field, sees that the ball is going to the right sideline. He comes, fills the hole, and you see he just blows him up there for a short gain. Lock rolling, 5.18 to go in the third. Snap to Mott on second down, waiting, will fire downfield, and a man is there, can't get it, incomplete, and a flag's gonna come. Everyone was looking around like, is the official right next to the play gonna throw the flag? He decided not to, and then the ref farther down the field makes the throw, and now there was some discussion after. Are they, no, they're not gonna pick up this flag. It's gonna be, gonna be a penalty. It felt. Pass interference, Yep. number 27, defense. 15 yard penalty. Again, Justin White yeah. running with the intended receiver. There. I think it's a good call. I think he had his Yo, he left had arm whole, on him. Way. He was kind of holding him and was not letting him get free to try to chase this ball down. And you see right there, just I mean, right there, without the arm on the back, DeJuan Dantzler makes that catch still. With the 15-yard penalty, the Trailblazers keep this drive moving after starting from their own 20. That'll be first down from the 37-yard line. Pistol formation for Dixie State. Darman Atoa is behind Mott in the shotgun. They give to Darman, banging his way across the 35 and down to the 33-yard line, a pickup of four, second down and six. And the run's been working for him. I wouldn't be surprised if they go at it again here. This next play is Natoa getting some breathing room finally between the tackles. 4.45 to go in the third. See State trailing 21-14, but they've got something cooking late in the third quarter. Trying to even this game up. They'll go back to Darman Atoa around the right end. He's got the 30, 25-20, still on his feet, inside the 15, and down to the Colorado Mesa 12-yard line. A pickup of 21 yards for Darman Atoa. And the Trailblazers have got something going on the ground. Yeah, no, Toa, just a downhill runner, gets to the outside, makes a couple guys miss, has to jump over Darian Turner after a good block there by Casey Allison, gets a couple extra yards and sets the Trailblazers up. First down at the 12-yard line. And the bruiser from Snow College came here with Coach Peterson, getting some work done on this trip. And a fumble, and Keaton Mott able to dive on it, and then they're going to get a late hit. It looks like that's going to be called on number 90, Samate Samote. Samote Samate. Samote Samate. I had him backwards. Samote Samate. Tomato, tomato, right? Yeah, exactly. But they're going to get him. It looks like on a late hit. As Keaton Mott fell and, and, on the ball, he this, came in kind of leading with his head. Though, he so did yeah. come in leading with his head, so that could be the call. It could the ball. be. It is going to be, the. I think, the head. It could be the way he came. Now they're discussing to see if they're actually going to make this call. And, and let's see, here comes Gary Leeper, our official with the call. After the play, personal foul, <clears throat> late hit with targeting. Yep. Number 90, defense. That number 90 has been disqualified. 
That is devastating for wow. the Mavericks. I mean, and he's just diving for the ball. And that's a tough blow. I, I, I certainly agree with Andy here. I mean, he's kind of just going for the ball. This is not necessarily a deliberate kind of late hit. Obviously, you see the bang-bang play there. We didn't get to see the end. Didn't get to see the actual hit. But Dixie State will have first and goal from the nine. Every once in a while, you got to have a break go your way. Referee still having a discussion with the Colorado Mesa coaches on the far side. And, you know, they have every right to be to be arguing, discuss a bang bang play. That's a tough call. I mean, certainly I certainly like to think that that's probably one that they'll look at, they'll appeal, and they'll look at, and right. he will be back to play next week in the first half. On a first down, here's Mott, rolls out, fires, caught, touchdown, Blake Kilgore. Tight end into the end zone. It was a two tight end set. You had Chase Hess and Kilgore in at the same time. And Kilgore makes the catch in for a second touchdown of the good, year. Good for Blake Kilgore because he was the, the second tight end who made the block to create the long run that put him in the red zone. And then on the two tight end route, they go to the deeper one, and it's Kilgore for an easy score. And Dixie State within one of tying this thing. 21-20, 346. Remaining in the third. Snap is low, and Hammond's going to pick it up, throws to the end zone. It's batted and incomplete. Was that a called two-point conversion? I think it was a or fire was call. A I think it was a – it must have been a bad snap, even though I didn't I – it, it, I think he must have dropped the snap. Yeah. Looked to me like he was trying to fumble with it on the ground, and by that time it was too late to pick it back up. And, oh, he had it down. Yeah, he it. pulled it up. He had the ball down. That, that couldn't have been a call, but – Receivers did a good job responding to it and going. Maybe it was. I mean, it was so in sync, it's almost like they did call it. Wow. 3.46 remaining in the third, and Dixie State trailing by one, 21 20. We'll take a 30 second timeout and come back to Trailblazer Football Network. Hey, what's Come up, man? man? Hey, good, good, good. You played before, right? Oh, absolutely. It's okay. all state, high school. Good, let's run some routes. Give me a post route. All right, let's do it. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. Three forty-six to go, a drive that saw just a little bit of everything. I think it's the first targeting call we've seen in a Dixie State game all season. And a tough blow for Colorado Mesa and Samote Samate. I think uh, was one that was a bang bang play. He could very well still be in this football game, and then, and then a, a two point try. I think on a broken play, and Dixie State trailing by one, 21 20. Yeah, I'm kind of dumbfounded by that PAT. I mean, we were talking on the break. No way that that was called, but it wasn't a horrible snap. Justin White will field it left hash, and this is returnable. He's out to the 30, and brought down from behind across the 35, but shy of the 40 at, we'll call it, the 37-yard line, and Colorado Mason will have good field position. Dixie State's had a good job with the first couple of possessions to start the third quarter on getting off the field on third downs. They've had two successful third down stops. See if they can continue to do that, maybe force a three and out for the Mavericks, who set up in a pretty good field position at the 36-yard line. Trailblazers, though, have done a better job on Mestis, and Bollinger hasn't been able to beat him, playing good coverage there as well. well the Trailblazers have certainly won the third quarter to this point. Bollinger will give Domestis, trying to find his way around the left end, and he's wrapped up and brought down from behind by Sir Barnes, and then Malaki Malaki there to finish him off. Now, after, I can't wait to ask Coach Peterson after this football game whether that was, it's like we talked about during the break. I don't, in that situation, you're not gonna try to go for two, but we saw in the replay that he had the ball down in time. Just kind of one of those, continues to add to the oddities in this game. On second down, Bollinger fires, far sideline incomplete. Trying to get it to Peter Anderson, and we talked at both in the pregame and at halftime, if you can put some pressure on Bollinger, make him feel yeah. uncomfortable, he'll make uh, short throws and shorts that just don't get to their intended receiver. And, and surprise it on second and five that they don't just run it. That's where they've had their success. Bollinger has struggled with his accuracy all game long. His percentage is really low completion-wise here today. 
Three minutes to go in the third quarter. Clock is stopped. It's third down and five from the Colorado Mesa 41-yard line. A three and out here would be fantastic. High snap to Bollinger, brings it down, fires far sideline. It is caught, tiptoes inside the sideline, and right at the marker, it's going to be a first down. Yeah, Needed Brad, five, got five exactly. Brad Toussaint ran a good route here, a good uh, route combo. As you see, just kind of a five-yard stop route, gets there to the sideline with some open space, turns around, makes the catch, makes sure he gets the feet inbounds for the first down. 244 remaining on first down. Here's Mestis. Path cut off around the end, so he cuts it back up the middle, and he's going to salvage one yard out of it. Second down and nine out to the 48. Yeah, he was dead to rights coming around the right end. Two defenders there were to force him up to the middle towards Sir Barnes, who brings him down for the gain of one. Clock rolling, 2.24 to go. Play clock at 15, plenty of time for Colorado Mesa, taking their time trying to slow this pace down. We go back to Mestis, and he's got room up the middle and is hit and brought down. He's across midfield and inside the Dixie State 45 to the 44-yard line, a pickup of four. Excuse me, a pickup of eight, and it'll be third down and one. And they take out the beef to bring in the pass rushers, but on third and one, they're going to need to have good gap discipline here as Mestis is having a good series. Third down, jump around. Third down and one ball at the Dixie State 44-yard line. There's Mestis again. He's got the first down, and then it's hit and driven back. He's still moving. The pile's still moving across the 40 down to the 36-yard line of Dixie State. My, oh, my. Yeah, he was just surrounded by about 13 or 14 different bodies, uh, a couple on, on his side and a couple Dixie State defenders, and just being able to move the pile, gets across the 40, picks up the first down. The Bollinger, here's Mestis again around the right end. And he'll pick up four more yards, second down and six. And Colorado Mesa is saying, all right, we're going to run Isaac Mestis until you can stop him. And with that run, Mestis is over 100 yards rushing on the day. Check that. Oh, there it is. Yeah, 101 for Mestis. And they're going to give it to him again. And he's wow. a, and that's actually Rodriguez. And he'll pick up the first down. And this, this Dixie State defense is not resisting the run at all. Third quarter clock down to 40. And the Mavericks down to the 24-yard line. Play action. Now they're going to throw. Bollinger throws across the middle. And it is incomplete. Double coverage looking for Anderson. In coverage is Loco Tui and Alex Lilliard. And every once in a while, it feels like Bollinger knows exactly where he wants to go with the football. And whether it's double yeah. coverage or not, he's going to make the throw. Yeah, and a good job by Lilliard getting depth here on his drop to make it more like a bracket throw between two guys. Great coverage all the way around downfield. Second down and 10. Clock stopped at 28 seconds. They go back to Mestis around the right end. He's hit after a pickup of two yards and brought down. The clock will continue to run. He stays inbounds. Clock at 18 and 17. This could have been the last play of the third quarter. It'd all be up to what Colorado Mesa would want to do. And in this situation, I, they're going to get to the fourth quarter and try to keep eating whatever clock they can in the fourth quarter. Maverick certainly right now in field goal range. Obviously, they have a tremendous field goal kicker that was good from 51 yards earlier in the season. Lucas Ruiz Diaz. Certainly within field goal range, if the Trailblazers though can get a stop on third down, would force a field goal still within one score. End of the third quarter, Dixie State trailing 21-20. Let's take just a 30, not a 60. We'll take just a 30. We don't want to miss anything. Come right back on the Trailblazer Football Network. Touchdown! You see that? Whoa, 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 we scored? Yeah, we scored. We're going to the playoffs. I can't believe I missed that. Every time I'm buzzed, I spend too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Wait, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. Okay, you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. I'm going to need that back. No. Nope. Kevin! 15 minutes up on the fourth quarter clock. We're so glad you're joining us today. Whether you're here in St. George, watching at home, maybe on TV, CEC TV, TDS Cable Channel 108, or whether you're watching on the Dixie State Stretch Internet Portal, 
or whether you're listening on ESPN 97.7 FM here in St. George or so many different ways you can follow us today, guys. If you're listening back at Grand Junction on KTMM 1340 AM, the team CMU Sports Network picking up our feed again today. We welcome you inside our broadcast. Hope you've had a good time listening to the game. We've got a game on our hands. It's 21-20. The visiting Mavericks with a one-point lead and a third down and eight from the DSU 22-yard line. First play of the fourth quarter. Bollinger looks, fires into the end zone, and it's incomplete. Receiver was there, but it was thrown behind him, and that's Trevin Lambert. Devin Chandler was in coverage, and it's third down, fourth down and eight, and here comes the field goal unit. Wow, they, they sent delayed pressure, but he had plenty of time, just a misfire. Big receiver down there waiting for it, just threw it well behind him. Yeah, big receiver, all you gotta do is put that toward the back of the end zone, and that was a sure touchdown. And here comes Ruiz Diaz. In a similar spot in the field where that last play was blocked, yeah. of course with the offsides, but a similar, uh, similar play Similar place from the field. So be a 39-yard field goal right hash. And the play clock has hit zero. And Coach Peterson was sure to point that one out. Hey, game, number 98, offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Yeah, they looked awfully nonchalant about that. Is he more comfortable from farther out? <laughs> he has hit from 51. This will be a 44-yard field goal now. Right hash. Now it is about the same exact spot as the one. C State will stay on sides this time, and it's blocked anyway. The Trailblazers have got it after the blocked field goal, and Dixie State will take over. What a momentum swinging play here for the Trailblazers. Didn't see who got their hand on it. It was one of the linemen coming up the middle. But a good job from the Trailblazers to get their hands up. It was kind of a low line drive. Field goal attempt. We get a great look here from the behind view. I think that's, is that Tyler Heat? I think it's Heat. 52, yeah. Tyler Heat. What a good play to block. get his left hand up to swing the momentum for the Trailblazers. Now they're going to take over from the 33 yard line and a chance to go down and score points and regain the lead. We'll take the lead for the first take time. Take the lead for the first time. Yep, that's right. 14 49 to go in the fourth. The comeback kids are trying to do it again. Mott, play action. He's looking, looking. Fires to the sideline. Jalen Powell catch at the 45, and he's out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Pickup of 12, and Dixie State moves the change. They'll hustle back to the line. And that took a while for, to develop. A great protection for Dixie State. Gave him a lot of time. Jalen Powell cleared out from the other side of the field all the way to the other sideline for an open catch. A long drag route that took a long time, like Andy mentioned, to develop. He had to come all the way across the formation. Good job by Mott staying patient and putting the ball right on the money. 14-22 to go in the fourth. Mott will leave it with Darman Natola. He's free across midfield, 45. And Keaton Mott down to block. He's at the 35-30, out of bounds at the 30-yard line, inside the 30 to the Colorado Mesa 27-yard line. Keaton Mott, the quarterback's your lead blocker. Yeah, huge play for the Trailblazers, getting this run game going. That'll push him over 200 yards for the day. Cumulatively, and Darman Toe just grabs this one, makes a couple guys miss, and then Keaton Mott getting out there to lead the block. Downfield as the Trailblazers are now set up inside their own 30. Haven't seen CJ Luongo for a little while, but they've gone to Darman Natoa, and the Mavericks have had no answer for Natoa. First down and 10 for Dixie State at the Maverick 27 yard line. And Mott fumbled the snap, and he'll lose two yards, make it three yards. A high snap, he wanted to give it to Darman Natoa and just moved the hands too quickly, and the ball popped up into the air, and now Mott's limping. Amazing he was able to hold on to that in traffic. It was bobbled right up around his chest. Somehow was able to come down with it. Yeah, he's, gonna, he's gonna stay in the football game, but he's had a few lower leg tweaks this season. Hope he didn't re-aggravate something there. And Luongo back into the game now, 79 yards, excuse me, 78 yards gain on the ground on 14 attempts. Mott on second down will load up, firing, looking to the end zone. Dantzler's there. He makes the catch. Is he in bounds? No, he's not. They say he's out of bounds, incomplete, in the outside of the end zone. Oh, my goodness. 
referees right there. We're clear across the field, so I'm sure it's the right call. But a great throw, a, a great catch. It looked certainly to be close, but maybe just was not able to get his foot down there as he neared the sideline. It'll be tough to see from this angle, but a pretty good view of it. See, great over-the-shoulder catch. Ooh. I, I saw I think, red. I, I think he was, he yeah. was bobbling the ball yep. there, and that's why uh, rolled yeah, incomplete. That's a good call. Have, that's the right call. Third down and 13. Now if you're Dixie State, you're looking at least getting into James Baird range here. Mott across the middle. Jalen Powell makes the catch. He's free. 10, 5, touchdown. Forget a field goal. 30-yard touchdown. Trailblazers lead it 26-21. A great Late. route ran here by Jalen Powell. He faked like he was going to the sideline, came back towards the middle of the field, grabbed it, and got all the way to the end zone. But there is a flag down on the play right near the middle of the field where that pass was completed. Came late from the head official from behind. Didn't look like there was a shove from, from Jalen Powell, but his, he did have separation from his defender. The flag is, like I said, right where or near the area where Jalen Powell made the catch. Maybe the touchdown still stands. We'll see. The result of the play is a touchdown. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, taunting number 53 offense. Mesa has elected to put that on the kickoff. Dixie State leading 26-21. Now does Dixie State send the offense back out of the field to go for two for real now? Yeah, I'm not sure if you if you do that at this point of the game. Obviously, there's there's still 12 and a half or 12 51 left to go in the game, but certainly possible that they try to go for two here and get points. I'd like to just see him go for an extra point here. I don't think you're going to have a final here comes, score. Here comes the offense. 26-21. They do, are going to like to go for two to try to make it a, a touchdown and an extra point game. I'd love to just see you just get any points on the board at this point, and I think you're not going to have a 27-21 final. you hopefully going to want to score another touchdown and maybe go for two at that point. Here we go. Three receivers out wide to the right. Mott. Looking, rolls out right, fires end zone, wide open, caught, two-point conversion, good. And who else? Jalen Powell having the game, game of the year. And Dixie State a full touchdown lead, 28-21, 12.51 to go. Don't you love it when what we're do I know? What do no, I know? I was wrong to play before. <laughs> Dixie State, 28, Colorado Mesa, 21. They've roared all the way back to lead it with 12.51 to go on the fourth. 30-second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Football Network. There is a place where the desert comes alive, where rain breaks forth from solid stone and gardens spring from blistered rock. There is a place with enough color to make a rainbow jealous, where boulders are bigger than buildings and cliffs are higher than clouds. There is a place that will straighten your step, tighten your grip, widen your eyes, and open your jaw. There is a place. Welcome back, 12.51 to go. Andy Thompson, a penny for your thoughts, my wow. friend. Dixie State has come all the way back to lead it 28-21, 12.51 to go. Jalen Powell has been unbelievable to catch that just on a little comeback or across the middle of the field, and he's got the breakaway speed to get into the end zone. And on another key third down, down in the red zone, Keith Mott pays it off. And Dixie State with the lead, go for two, send it to seven points. Now that one can confirm that they did go for two. Intentionally. Intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> James Baird, I've been waiting to say this until he had a chance to you know, actually make it. He's He is tied for the single season PAT record. And Baird with the kickoff, it's a fielded at the 20 because that penalty was enforced. And here comes the return across the 35 to the 40 across midfield and tackled inside Dixie State territory down to the 41 yard line of the Trailblazers and you see why they chose to enforce the penalty on the kickoff. Yeah, and Justin White here does a good job of just getting to the end. It looks like a few Trailblazers must have broken contain as he started near the right sideline and crossed all the way across the field to the left hash before cutting it back up towards the middle of the field. Sets up the Mavericks in great field position at the 41 yard line of Dixie State. And if you're Dixie State, Continue to play the same way you've played defensively, but this would be a great time for a turnover, don't you think? Snap to Bollinger, he'll roll out to his right, looking, 
trying to find a man, and he's wide open as Peter Anderson at the 20, tackled from behind, the ball came out! And they're gonna say that it was the ground, but I'm not so sure about that, because the ball was on the grass as he hit the ground. At least it looked like from up here. We'll have replay and it will show us. And we got a cameraman right down there, right next to that, as we hopefully are gonna get a good replay of this one to see exactly what happened. They're gonna call it a completed catch, and that the ball forced the fumble. You see, he grabs it there, starts to stumble around the 20 yard line. No, the football's That's out. out. That's that out. is 1,000% a fumble on yeah. first down, a five yard pickup for Colorado Mesa down to the 11 yard line, and that one was missed. We do not have replay at Division Two. Actually, they'll give it a three yard pickup, second down and seven to the 11. That should be Dixie State football. Why, oh my. That was like, you know, I tried to say my oh my, and I said why oh my. That was like double the, <laughs> the, the flabber gas station. Is that a word? Bollinger to Peter Anderson makes the catch short of the first down. Inside the 10, down to the seven yard line. And it'll be third down and two. And just like that, already to third down, they gotta be key and mess this here on the zone read handoff. Man. Snap to Bollinger, rolls out to his left. He'll dump it out of the backfield. The Dixie State wow. defender there, and he makes the stop. It was to Dagen Ranks to tie it in, and he loses yards back to the 10-yard line. And now Colorado Mesa, the offense, saying, let's try to go for it, wow. and they'll have to kick a field goal. Yeah, J.T. Anderson defeats his block. Beautiful set-up play there by the Mavericks. Anderson was just the better man, getting past the offensive lineman and make the tackle. Yeah, I was just going to reiterate when he said a good play design to fake and force all the motion out to the left and come back as a screen to your right, but did not force JT Anderson. Astute comment by you, Andy, to be able to recognize that as well as they try a field goal here. Colorado Mesa has sent Blake Moore out onto the field. This is not Ruiz Diaz. There's the snap, the hold, the kick is good. With 10.30 to play, Dixie State is able to hold Colorado Mesa to a field goal. The Trailblazers lead 28-24. We take a 30-second timeout and come right back on the Trailblazer Football Network. I got you right where I want you. I make this one, it's over. I win. No pressure. Bring it. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. Ten thirty to go. Carrick Segmiller with you, the voice of the Trailblazers. Of course, joining me is Andy Thompson and Drayson Ball. And guys, if the Trailblazers end up losing this football game, you're going to be able to go back. And there's a ton of things you can change in the first half, but a clear fumble was ruled. It's not a fumble. CMU able to get a field goal. The, the positive part is that Dixie State was able to make some big plays defensively and hold Colorado Mesa to a field goal to, to maintain the lead at 28-24, 10.30 to go, and now the ball's in your court offensively. The kickoff will be fielded by Xavier Smith at the goal line far side. Across the 10 to the 15, hit inside the 20 and brought down at the 19 yard line. That is where Dixie State will take over. And if you're Dixie State, I mean, obviously plenty of time left into this in this game. You've established the run on your previous drive. You did a very good job of working the run game, both through Notoa. St. Luongo had a run there, too, there as well. But I think at this point in the game, obviously you're not trying to run the clock out. you still got plenty of time left. But if you can continue to keep the run game going and work some clock and then culminate, culminate it with either a field goal or hopefully a touchdown at the end of this drive and maybe take off four or five minutes, you put Colorado Mesa in a tough position down by maybe a score, maybe possibly possibly two scores with a short clock. 10.24 to go. And Dixie State gonna take a timeout. Play clock was winding down after the change of possession and Dixie State will take the timeout. With 10.24 to play, Dixie State leads 28-24. Timeout's brought to you by Dairy Queen. We'll take it. 30 second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Football Network.
Welcome back. Fans enjoying themselves here at Trailblazer Stadium, much more than in the first half. Dixie State leading 28-24, 10-24 to go in the fourth. Although Trailblazers lead it, this is a crucial drive here. Mott with Sage Luongo behind him. We'll hand off to Sage A. Big hole across the middle. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, foot race, 40, 30, 20. 10, 5, touchdown, C.J. Luongo, 81 yards to the house, and there is his first 100-yard rushing game of the season, and he is now your Dixie State career rushing leader with 18 career rushing touchdowns. C.J. Luongo is the Dixie State rushing king. Leader in all-time yards, and loud leader in all-time touchdowns. He goes over 100 yards on a very, very similar play from the play last week where they scored on the first play of the game right up the gut. And the speedy Sage Luongo, now the king, standing alone on top of the Dixie State rushing record, record book. Passes to John Coleman. James Baird, the PAT, is up and good. And now James Baird is your single season PAT record holder. That's his 36th PAT of the season. Records everywhere. Dixie State leading 35-24 with 10-11 to go. We'll take a 30-second timeout. St. J. Luongo, 81 yards to the house. We're back after this 30-second timeout on the Trailblazer Football Network. I'm heading out, man. You want to ride? No, I got my car, but I actually really need to go to the bathroom. Dude, are you okay? I am definitely buzzed. Yeah. I think I will take this and I will take that ride home. Si los amas como para reaprender ecuaciones para poder enseñárselas, entonces los amas como para visitar en htsa.gov slash protegidos y comprobar que van correctamente abrochados en el asiento trasero del auto. 10-11 to go, Dixie State, a 35-24 lead. And Andy Thompson, have you ever seen anything like this? Holy Dixie cow. Dixie State outscoring Colorado Mesa 28-3 in the second half. Unbelievable change of, you know, it's a tale of two halves this game. Seiji and Luongo, we were talking about it in the pregame leading up to this game. He needs to get going in this one. Had one of his better games last year in this game. And he gets over 100 yards for the first time this season with that epic run there for the long touchdown. Did C.J. Luongo, now your Dixie State career rushing touchdowns leader. His 18th career rushing touchdown, and what a way to do it. And now Dixie State going to go squib kick. It's a bouncy kick fielded at the 25-yard line and then returned with a head of steam out to the 40-yard line, making the 39-yard line. Interesting choice there to go squib instead of kick it to Justin White or to Sissio again. Yeah, Newton did a good job. The up back getting the ball and going full force ahead. Has had a, a relatively quiet game on the defensive side of the ball for the Mavericks compared to what he normally does. But a good return nonetheless. Mavericks will have it on their own 40-yard line. Twins to the far side. Bollinger in the backfield with Mestis. Bollinger rolls out, fires incomplete, and then a hard hit out of bounds after Mestis couldn't bring it in. Malaki Malaki there to make sure that Mestis would have no chance in that one. Second down and 10 for the Mavericks. Yeah, this one just uh, thrown a little bit high for Mestis to be able to bring in, but a good job there in coverage. We've talked about it a lot today. The Trailblazers have allowed the Mavericks to just kind of check down and throw these short little out route passes or towards the sidelines have not let them get anything going downfield uh, to any success so far this game. On second down, back to Mestis. And he'll dance his way across the 40, down across the 45 to the 46 yard line, a pickup of six yards. And Dixie State sending six there on second and 10, allowing their defensive backs and safeties to go man on man in the defensive secondary. Keith, they're down here for Bollinger. Oh, 
Third down and four. Mavericks taking their time. Play clock down to five. 9.20 on the game clock. Here's Bollinger loading up. Fires. Sideline. Caught. Or did he get his foot on the green grass? He did. JT Anderson went for the pick and missed. And Toussaint is able to bring it in awkwardly, I may say, but still get the foot down for the catch of the first down. And yeah, just ran a little route here, a little 15-yard route to the sidelines and just turns, gets his foot down there near the 40-yard line, and as he's mentioned, J.T. Anderson forced him out of bounds there. Bollinger on first down, passes complete to Peter Anderson, and he's knocked out of bounds by Alex Lilliard. And Lilliard and, An and Anderson <laughs> have to – it looked like after the play that Anderson was just giving a little tap on – Lilliard a little tap on the helmet saying, hey, good hit. But then <laughs> Lilliard and, and Anderson were barking at each other all the way back to the huddle. Yeah, Anderson tries to stop to allow Lilliard – Lilliard to fly past him, but Lilliard he gives a little tap right on the helmet there. and says, "Hey, good job." And Alex didn't like that. Second down and six. Great option. Bollinger keeps it. Fools almost everybody. He's going to go for the first down down to the 25-yard line, folks. This game is is not over yet. Mavericks have a first down down to the 25-yard line of Dixie State. Clock rolling. 8:23 to go. Yeah, Bollinger only had nine yards of rushing up to that point. Picks up about 10 yards there to pick up the first down. 8-10 remaining here in quarter number four. Bollinger fires across the middle. Man is there, and it is intercepted. Flags first, though, and it's the right call. And it's Augustus Frazier with the interception, but you're going to get pass interference, and it's the right call. As is that Dagen Ranks, the intended receiver. Or is it 87? It's Sean Apiki. Sean Apiki. We'll see what the call is officially. There was contact before Frazier flew in. And it's going to be pass interference. Defense. 15 yard penalty. It's on first down. You could kind of hear, as the mic was cutting in and out, the Dixie State players screaming that the ball was tipped. I don't know if we'll get a look at whether it was or not. But that's the P that's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's clear. That's, class that's pass interference yeah. right there. That's yeah, 100%. That's, as, that's easy as easy call. as they come. Yep. First and goal from the 10 for the Mavericks. Can this Dixie State defense step up with its back against the wall? And... Music playing over the PA speakers as the players try to. I mean, they, the players are out there and ready to go. We got music playing. I guess the Coach Peterson was having a discussion with the referee there. That may have been what. That Coach Peterson? Did he, shave it? Did he shave his beard? I, don't, I guess it's not. No, it's him. He might have shaved. Snap to it's a different quarterback. No, it's that's Bollinger still, and he's going down. A sack for the Dixie State defense. The one on his jersey was hidden for just a minute. Then it appeared. Bollinger goes down. He's sacked, and it's a big play on first down. Mitch Jacobs was the first to meet him coming off the right end there. And as Bollinger steps up into the pocket, Mitch Jacobs just comes around his block. And then, of course, Dylan Henderson comes in there, and one other trailblazer comes in. That's Sir Barnes to finish him off, but Mitch Jacobs got the first contact. Whistles before the play. It's going to be on Colorado Mesa, procedural penalty. False start, number 17, offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. And that's Trevin Lambert, ride receiver. So it's going to be second and goal for the Mavericks from the 21-yard line. All right, I'm Asa head coach Russ Martin with a couple of questions for our official Gary Leeper. I want to remind you when this thing is all said and done, which it is very far from said and done, we'll have the Jimmy John's postgame report. We'll name a SkyWest Airlines player of the game and a Honolulu Grill player play of the game. I've got my vote for the play of the game, but the player of the game may be a little tougher. Jalen Powell, eight catches, 127 yards, two touchdowns. Say Luongo, 15 carries, 159 yards, and a touchdown. 
We'll see. A lot of football to be played still. Second and goal from the 21. Bollinger going to be chased from behind. He's hit as he throws, and it's caught for the touchdown. Wow. Our first blown coverage of the game, and it goes for a touchdown. What an adjustment. There was, there was two red jerseys there, and they stopped on the play. And, and a touchdown catch. Bollinger and a flag just after the play. And Toussaint just gets behind the two trailblazers here, just keeps the ball alive, keeps tracking it, and somehow got the ball in there. Great job. Yeah, and, and and Bollinger was dead to rights in the backfield. Had yeah. three or four trailblazers in pursuit, and I wonder if the defensive secondary thought that Bollinger was just going to throw it away. It went so far or so close I mean, to like, the sideline. Yeah. They, yeah. It was double coverage. They, stopped. they had him there, and they just, next thing you know, he's making the catch in the end zone. A flag flew after the play. They have not reported the penalty yet. They're asking the Ma Mavericks, though. Looks like it's going to be on Dixie yeah. State on whether they want to, where they want to enforce this penalty. Here comes the call. The result of the play is a touchdown. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number four of the defense. That is his first unsportsmanlike conduct of the game. And I didn't report about where that was going to be enforced. The ball's at the four-yard line right now, three-yard line. More than likely, it'll be probably assessed on the on kickoff. The kickoff. Colorado Mesa going to go for two. Going to try to get those two points back. The media timeout possibly looming after this play. Bollinger takes it. He'll roll out and fires back the other way, and it's caught. Beautiful. A beautiful play call. Dagen Ranks makes the catch, and it's a three-point game again, folks. Great design. Ranks just blocks for a minute. It's an obvious throwback. Rolls right. They set up on the left hash to set it up. And there's a two-point conversion. 35-32. It's immediate timeout. 90-second timeout. And back on the Trailblazer Football Network. You can achieve a lot using your imagination. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to brag, but... Wait, who's that? And why is she all over these achievement awards? But with STEM, the sky's the limit. Shaboom! Use STEM to envision... Okay, I'm seeing it. Yeah. Invent. Got any ideas? I've got a few, actually and create a better world. Told you she's super smart. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. Where do you find the titans of classical music in St. George? Classical music on Radio St. George, 100.3 FM. Where do you find the legends of jazz? Evenings on Radio St. George, 100.3 FM. Na, 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 na. Are we there yet? Yep, we're here. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Seven eleven remaining here in the fourth quarter, and we are far from over. Approaching 3.40 p.m. here in St. George, Utah. Now, that penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. And if you're Colorado Mesa, it begs the question, do you just boot it into the end zone, or do you try to kick this one high intentionally? I guess any more you can call the fair catch. Yeah, and exactly. take it out of the 25, yeah, and, that and it takes really... That out. So I, I'm like assuming that that Blake Moore is set to just bomb this one through the end zone. And they're going to squib it. Smith picks it up at the 10. And he's tackled shy of the 15-yard line. And then a Dixie State player tackled to the ground after the play. And no flags. I hate to say this game after game, but you feel like if it would have gone the other way around, the flag would have been thrown. 7.04 to go late here in the fourth quarter. Dixie State a 35-32 lead. Great execution on the kickoff by the Mavericks. They just drill a grounder. No 
allows with the short field to cover down there to get him before the 15 yard line. Here we go. A critical drive for this Dixie State offense. Can they do it again? They go back to CJ. He's got another hole and he'll get out to the 20 yard line, a gain of seven on a first down. It'll be second down and three. Or did they move the ball back to the 19 now? Back to the 19, a pickup of six. Second down and four. Sage Luongo after that 80 yard, 81 yard touchdown run on the previous drive gets the first carry. He's got 16 carries now for 165 yards on the day. By far his best game of the season. Sage's career high is 187 yards against Adams State two years ago. Mott fires far sideline. Jalen Powell makes the catch. No, that's Dantzler. Juan Dantzler makes the catch, and at what point is the forward progress stopped? And finally, the whistles ring out. First down for Dixie State. The clock will stop momentarily while they spot the ball, and now it's running again. Another point of emphasis for the Trailblazers at this point in the field is you've got to be able to hold on to the football. When you get the catch or get the, get the handoff, getting yards is obviously great, and you want to gain as much yard as possible and run off the clock, but you also got to take care of the football. Keep it tight. First down and 10 at the 26. They'll go back to CJ. Off tackle, right side. He'll pick up one yard. Second down and nine. The clock will continue to roll. 5.50 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Great job by the Mavericks here on that left side. Just great contain. Number 52 has done a great job all game long in Schulman on that left side, forcing running backs to go back inside to where a bunch of Mavericks were there to take him down. Second down and nine, 5.30 on the game clock. There's 20 seconds on the play clock, but Dixie State can't be chasing seconds at this point. But they are gonna take their time. Play clock under 10 now. Can't go too conservative, only a three point lead. Read option, Mock gonna keep it. He's at the 30, 35, 40, and brought down at the 40 yard line. 13 yard gain for Keaton Mott. Slow to get up and he's reaching for the right ankle. Mott's battled through a some adversity today. He's, he's, been, uh, he's been banged up a few times, not only this season, but Ooh. so far in the day he tries to get up, can't put any pressure Here comes Tanner Hammond. on that right leg. But uh, he's done a great job today, especially with that read option. He picks up the first down there, keeps the chains moving, keeps the clock running. But being attended to right now by the Dixie State trainers, Tanner Hammond getting loose on the sidelines. Great pull there on the, on the zone read. And, Lowers the shoulder there. You see that right leg kind of just gets taken out by the defender. They're going to work on Keaton out on the field. He's clearly in some pain. Let's take a 30-second timeout for an injury and come right back on the Trailblazer Football Network. There is a place where looking out means looking in, where an impression lasting only a few seconds will be imprinted on a life forever, where courage is forged, and innocence rediscovered, where remembering is rewarding and forgetting unforgettable. There is a place where truth is felt and where seeing is believing. There is a place. Welcome back. Keaton Mott going to be helped by the Dixie State trainers off the field. And if you, know, you look at his completion, he's, he's 17 of 28 for 248 yards is Keaton Mott. He did have the one interception, but it was a tip drill interception. And he's really played a great game for Dixie State tonight. has been key in this comeback. And Tanner Hammond is going to be your quarterback Came in and had a great second half against Shadron State last week. It really, other than being left-handed, he's not much different than Keaton Mott. They'll hand off to CJ. He's at the 40, on his feet still, churning for the 50-yard line. He carried a defender. He'll be one yard shy of the first down, but he carried a defender for four yards. A nine-yard pickup for CJ Luongo. And Luongo's got to continue to have the game of his life here with the backup quarterback in. Almost gets to the first down there, lunging forward. He's doing a great job this entire second half. Mesa has three timeouts left. If the Trailblazers get another first down, they you got to start to wonder yep. when they start to use those timeouts. If they continue to gain guard, yards on the ground, you're going to have to see them start to maybe burn a few timeouts before they get the ball back. 
Second down and one, 428 remaining for Dixie State. Snap to Hammond, give to CJ, and he'll get the one yard he needs. It gets two yards and a first down for Dixie State across the 50 to the Colorado Mesa 48 yard line. CJ Luongo now with 178 yards rushing on 19 carries. CJ Luongo keeps the chains moving. It'll stop the clock momentarily until the chains are reset, but the Trailblazers continue to move the ball on the ground. A key of emphasis coming into the game. They have answered the question with over 200 yards, maybe even close, getting close to 300 yards on the ground. They've just done a good job moving the ball in that regard today. 3.48 to go. They go back to CJ. He's got room around the right end. He's at the 40 Ooh. and is brought down shy of the 40. At the 42-yard line, a seven-yard gain. I thought Sage was turning the corner and he was going to go again. But a great tackle, first down saving tackle right here. And it's Darian Turner. Darian Turner. That was a heck of a stop. CJ Luongo now with 185 yards rushing. He's never gone over 200 yards in his career. Career high is 187. The Trailblazers are now over 300 yards of rushing. And off to CJ, fighting his way forward. And he's going to be two yards shy of the first down. And it's going to be third down and two. And a timeout called by Colorado Mesa with 2.58 remaining. Timeout's brought to you by Dairy Queen. We'll take it as well. 35-32, Dixie State lead, 2.58 to go. 30-second timeout right back on the Trailblazer Football Network. Radio Dixie 91.3. We don't play that. Nope, not that. A big fat no there. That's what we play. And stuff like that. On St. George's only alternative, Radio Dixie 91.3. Oh, and from 9 till midnight, we play this. I need a one dance. And this. Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. Timeouts brought to you by Dairy Queen. We welcome you back inside the broadcast. 2.58 to go, Dixie State, a 35-32 lead. If you're not sitting down after we're back from timeout before I read this stat, you may want to, because it may just blow you onto your backside. Dixie State with 558 yards of total offense to 279 yards of total offense for Colorado Mesa. And yet it's just a three-point Dixie State lead. It was all to do with that first half and all the wacky things that happened. Third down and two. Ball at the 41-yard line. They need the 39. They give to Sage. He's not going to get it. But a flag flies. Right at the line of scrimmage. And now you've got an offensive lineman down injured as well. So the clock will stop during the injury. The flag if game. It's, if it's a holding penalty, Drayson and Andy, does Colorado Mesa consider declining? No, they're pointing. Casey Allison is pointing. Colorado Mesa's way and indicating a possible face mask. Yeah, and the, the ball, the flag, excuse me, came from the defensive secondary, not typically the area where you'd see a hold, a hold. come from. Typically you'd see the hold come from yeah. the referee behind the line of scrimmage, but this one comes from the defensive secondary, maybe indicating a hand to the face or a face mask. The Trailblazers, at least Casey Allison, certainly thinks it seemed it is on the Mavericks. Here we get the call. Personal foul. Personal foul. Face mask, number 43, wow. defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. And for the first time all game in a pivotal situation, the penalty flag goes against the Mavericks instead of the Trailblazers here as they brought everybody right up the middle. And I didn't see it on that replay. Did they call 43? I couldn't see it either. They called 43. That's Mason Newton. He was the first to get there. but Fresh set of downs for Dixie State at the Colorado Mesa 26-yard line. C.J. Luongo is still your back. He's one yard away from his career high. 2.46 on the game clock. Colorado Mesa with two timeouts. The late handoff to C.J. And he is swallowed up by Newton and tackled backwards. And Colorado Mesa going to take a timeout immediately with 2.39 to play. 
30-second timeout brought to you by Dairy Queen. Let's keep it right here this time, guys. We'll kind of talk this one through. I know if you're Dixie State, you want the chains to continue to move, but at what point after all these runs do maybe you throw in a play action and, and bootleg your quarterback out? And, and maybe, you know, I'm not talking about throwing for the end zone, but, you know, finding Jalen Powell on a five-yard out, you know, just something to now keep this Colorado Mason defensive line yeah. honest. I know you don't want the clock to stop, but at what point do you consider it? You're only up by three. You don't really want to give the football back here. You want to either run the clock out or get into the end zone and win this You need thing. a first down or a touchdown. Even a field goal remains a, a one-possession yes. game. But the way that Bollinger's been playing in Dixie State, I know they're confident in their, in their defense and that they're going to give them a long field potentially. Um, but I, I agree with you. I wouldn't mind seeing – you just got to get a first down, however you can get it. I wouldn't mind seeing a pass play. If they do go a pass play, something simple, something conservative, yeah. maybe a five-yard that, yeah, over what the I said, middle. Like, yeah, find exactly. Easy pitch and catch, not something super difficult downfield. If they get maybe a five- or six-yard easy completion, gain a couple yards here on a second down, force a third down and manageable, and then an easy, simple pass play, might, not like, to, might, might like to see something like that. Second down and 11. Read option. Hammond going to keep it. He's got room, 25, still on his feet, diving for the 20-yard line and is tackled. Did he go out of bounds or did he try to stop inbounds? And they're going to say they he went out of bounds. Down. I don't know. He was tackled out of bounds, I thought. He stopped at the last second. No, now they're going to wind it. Now the clock's rolling. 2.23 to go. Hammond with the quarterback scramble. And the read option gets down to the 20-yard line and is third down and four. And a heads-up play by Hammond to try to stay in bounds. Yeah, he stopped right he at stopped the last right second. There. He realized, hey, step. i got to stay in bounds and keep the clock running. Third down and four. Huge one, and we're going to have a free play. Hammond to the end zone. Hess is there. Touchdown, Trailblazers on the free play. Dixie State with the touchdown. A great, great job by Tanner Hammond to draw the, offense, to the defensive line off sides. Now this Dixie State offense, now they, it's going to count. Dixie, the referee just came down and signaled that it was a touchdown. It was a free play. Tanner Hammond. Offside, number 43, defense is declined. Heads up play from Tanner Hammond. He has made great plays in both appearances he's had in the last two weeks. And the Trailblazers will take the lead 41-32 with 1.59 to go here in quarter number four. Chase Hess had to wait an awfully Absolutely. long time for that Absolutely, fell ball from to the clouds down. and on a third down. What a play. High snap. Hammond will bring it down. Baird, the PAT, yeah. is up and it's through. Dixie State a 42-32 lead. The Trailblazers outscoring Colorado Mesa 35-11. Here in the second half, 159 to go. Dixie State a 42-32 lead, 30-second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Football Network. I got you right where I want you. If I make this one, it's over. I win. No pressure. Bring it. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. One fifty-nine to play. Dixie State a 42-32 lead. Colorado Mesa with one timeout. And guys, Dixie State outscoring Colorado Mesa 35-11. to That sounds like a weird football but you had a field goal and a, and a touchdown and a two-point two conversion. conversion so outscoring Colorado Mesa 35 to 11 in the second half has totally flipped the script and lead it 42 22 with under two to play and we know how the trouble how good the trailblazers are in the second half of ball games especially in the third the third quarter they did a very good job there but the fourth quarter they've scored a handful of points here as well and they'll squib it again and it is fielded at the 25 yard line and then Gets across the 35 to the 37 yard line, and that was Mason Newton, and he just grabs it and runs the only way he knows how and just plows into the pile. Colorado Mesa will start at its own 34 yard line. 
And if you're Dixie State here defensively on this possession, you've got, to, 37. you've got to keep everything in front of you. We know that Bollinger has a great arm. We know that Peter Anderson is their speed guy that can get over the top. You don't want, them, you don't want to allow them to score quickly here by getting a long, deep pass that will score maybe on the first or second possession. Keep everything in front. Don't let anything behind you. 154 to go. Dixie State a 42-32 lead and has scored over 40 points for the first time in three weeks. Bollinger downfield, incomplete. Great coverage by Lovelace Rufus, the freshman. The yeah, pass was intended for KJ Sapp and Lovelace Rufus was just right there running step for step, had underneath coverage and forced Bollinger to try to throw this one over the top and just puts a little bit too much on it and out of reach for Sapp. As it has been over 13 years since Dixie State has defeated Colorado Mesa here in St. George. But they're able to hold on. Just the third win against the Mavericks in the last 11 matchups. Bollinger, he spins out of a tackle, spins wow. again, and then is met by Lenadre Schwally that time around. He'll pick up seven yards. It'll be third down and three. Ball out to the 40 three-yard line. Yeah, a couple trailblazers have a shot at him, including Dylan Hendrickson right around the line of scrimmage, and then the whoop, spin move, does it a couple times. Third manageable now. Third down and four. Bollinger forced out to his right. He'll heave downfield, and it is oh. intercepted! Oh. Intercepted! Oh my Incredible! Oh. Cajun Smith for Grevich! Oh my God! Caught word. the ball with his feet off the ground, out of bounds, and tossed it back to JT Anderson, oh who word. caught the ball inbound. I have never. And it's an interception! Oh my goodness! I have never seen anything like that in my life. What a play! This is going to be on Sports Center top ten. As you see, the interception gets thrown. Grabbed there and then thrown back in play to JT Anderson. Oh my goodness! He grabs it for the end zone. Hashtag Sports Center top Amazing 10. awareness to go up and get it. And then the receiver, the guy who caught it, was had to make a pretty good catch. Two on his knees. Unbelievable. The referee's having a discussion after all this and my crazy <laughs> reaction. If this somehow is overturned, I'm gonna feel like a fool. But there, there's no way this can be overturned. I don't and think I, that's what they're discussing. I think they're just maybe having a. And, and I've got to say, as, as I was being groomed and, and trained as a, a young broadcaster, I was always told not to scream into the mic the way that I just did, but I have never <laughs> witnessed anything like I just witnessed. And we were all screaming. Amazing. That was unbelievable. First down, Dixie. Then there's first down, Dixie State. <laughs> oh. And we will, do our, we will do our part, folks. And maybe we can... We'll take a look at that one on the post game show, but we will get that clipped out, and that will be see that one on Sports Center, Center top, top 10, 10 nominee. That one's going to be on there tonight. Tanner Hammond going to kneel on it. Colorado Mesa is not going to use a timeout. Wow! And how's that for an exclamation point? Dixie State. We'll have to kneel on this thing one more time. There's 50 on the game clock, 21 on the play clock. And for the first time since October of 2006, Dixie State has defeated Colorado Mesa in St. George, Utah in comeback fashion. Tanner Hammond kneels on it. Oh, it's Keaton Mott. They let Keaton come out to, to seal the deal. Good to see that he's okay. And the Dixie State Trailblazers do it again in comeback fashion, you guys. Dixie State, Maybe. how's this for a stat? Dixie State is now 4-2 and two this season when trailing at halftime. Wow. Unbelievable. 4-2 wow. and two this season when trailing at halftime. A huge win over Colorado Mesa. A, a bounce back victory after uh, the heartbreaking defeat last week against Shatter and State. The Trailblazers now get up to seven wins, matching their record from last season with two games still to play. They did not get to seven wins until the final game of the season last year. And uh, they able to get to seven wins with two games left to play. And that's a uh, ties a school record for uh, for the most amount of wins in the Division yeah. Two era. And like I said, a great bounce back win over a rival school that uh, you know wanted to come in and you knew this game was going to be competitive and it was competitive right down to the very end. Well, well, and how much momentum does this give you? I mean, obviously a blowout win would have given you momentum too, but you're down 21-7 to seven at halftime, and you come out and you win this thing 42-32. to 32. 
And now you you take this win on the road with you, and momentum yeah. is a funny thing, you guys. I mean, nobody in the country thought that Dixie State was going to beat Colorado School of Mines here last year. Certainly the Ore Diggers have had this game as they are wrapping up a win over South Dakota Mines. Certainly they've had this Dixie State game circled on their calendar all year long because of that. It, you know, took away an undefeated season. And, and uh, you know, but uh, anything can happen in one game. And now Dixie State will make the trip to Golden, Colorado at 7-2 and two overall, 6-2 and two in the RMAC, an opportunity still to try to get to nine wins and uh, to make this in an historic season. And even with a win over Adams State, you know, even if you go one and one here, you still have the most wins in program history. The Trailblazers with a huge comeback victory, the win of the season. I'm going to call this Dixie State now with a winning record at home. The Trailblazers are 3-2 and two to go with their 4-0 and record on the road. and They'll take that undefeated record, road record on the road with them next week to Colorado School of Mines. But uh, Andy, Drayson, and I have been Mike Hogs the last couple of a few minutes, so uh, I, I got to pick your brain. Well, on I'm this. just blown away. This is your, your second game here on yeah. the call with us this year, and and um, you know what a comeback win for the Trailblazers. Clearly, like you said, the signature win of this season to beat a team with a winning record coming in, even pretty much uh, all the way around on on paper with your roster. You you start the way that you do and basically give them the first half, but to show the resiliency, you take a punch, you come out and win not only in dramatic fashion but just it's doing stuff that we you know have never seen before to win that's a huge exclamation point going into next week with colorado school of mines and hopefully they can carry that with them as they're celebrating down on the field singing the fight song with the students what a game we are not done yet we have got to break it down inside the jimmy johns post game report and we got to take a breather to get ready for it let's take a three minute timeout, then we will come back with the jimmy johns post game report i thought i knew what the honolulu real play of the game was going to be but i think that uh is going to have to be changed now uh three minute timeout. we'll come back to wrap this up 42 32 dixie state wins it 30 minute timeout, and back on the trouble football network You know, we may have started out small, but we were great. Families and fans rallied behind their team. The community cared, and everyone showed up to cheer. Now, we're bigger than ever. Dixie State is going to Division One. But at the end of the day, it's the community and fans that make us great. Whether you give five bucks or a thousand, every dollar, every seat in the stands, every one of you can help blaze our trail to Division I athletics. Because this is our team. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! For over a century, Dixie State University has been shaping the trailblazers of tomorrow by providing a culture of active learning, active life. With a paradigm of real-world experience, mixed with cutting-edge technologies and rich traditions, we provide one of the most affordable educations in the West set against the most stunning backdrop on the planet. Where do you find the titans of classical music in St. George?
classical music on Radio St. George 100.3 FM. Where do you find the legends of jazz? Evenings on Radio St. George 100.3 FM. Let that bumper music play for just a little bit. It's a good tune. Good on that one, Ken, back in the ESPN 97.7 FM studio. Dixie State, 42-32 winners over Colorado Mesa. The Trailblazers, 7-2 overall, 6-2 in the RMAC. And at this point, uh, the Trailblazers have not lost consecutive games throughout this season. Trailblazers have matched their uh, program record for wins in a single season with two opportunities to add to that tally at Colorado School of Mines next week and then back home to host Adams State on the 16th of November. Welcome inside the Jimmy John's Post Game Show. We will name Skywest Airlines player of the game and a Honolulu Grill play of the game uh, but before we do so I'm, I'm not sure I'm pretty uh, let's take a look at some second half highlights if we've got them uh, I want to do that very first if we do have them so Dixie State trailing 21 to 7 at halftime guys and they come out and uh, Casey Allison making that diving catch to help get things started yeah, in the second half didn't have his best game of the year but made some huge plays including that one diving it was a decent throw, but a beautiful catch, laying all the way out to get it right on the goal line. Yeah, that was the first play. That was the first uh, possession of the second quarter. And then, of course, this one goes later in that same quarter. Goes to Blake Kilgore, nine-yard pass from Keaton Mott. He was wide open, that double tight end set like we talked about. This was the blocked field goal that uh, was blocked. And, and the Trailblazers were the force uh, of turnover the, on down. The real blocked good, field goal. The real blocked field goal. And then, of course, on the next possession, Keaton Mott finds Jalen Powell, who scampers into the end zone for Turns 30 on the Jets. yards. It gets into the touch. It gets into the end zone there. That made it a 28-21 game after the two-point conversion was good. And then he finds there that's the Jalen Powell two-point conversion. Following that touchdown drive, Keaton Mott then hands it to Sage Luongo. This was the 81-yard touchdown run that put him over 100 yards on the day. You see, that does a good job of avoiding Sissio there along the sidelines and keeps on his feet to stay into the end zone. What a way to become the Dixie State career rushing touchdowns leader. A big run from Sage there. Dixie State. Would we'll hold on and, and late in the game, force this one to the sideline. Well, that was a touchdown pass. That uh, a great catch in the end zone by Bradley Toussaint. And then Tanner Hammond on the free play would lead these guys down the field. Chase Hess Beautiful making the catch. Pass. Both tight ends had a touchdown catch for the second time this season, guys. And then uh, the Trailblazers winning this one. Of course, you have to look at this play again. Bollinger forced out. Cajun Smith Begrevich tips it. Tosses it back into play. JT <laughs> Anderson makes the interception. And uh, you bet your bottom dollar we're going to get that thing online and we are going to get that nominated. Yeah, Sports Center is going to love your call. You're going to go viral 10. on Sports Center. Uh, you know, and, uh, I'm not sure if that's the right reason to go viral <laughs> on Sports Center, but uh, let's see how many different. We've got a ton of different looks at this here. Trevor Hill, basketball player for Dixie State, was on the Sports Center top 10 with a the steal and his signature steal and breakaway 360 dunk. This could be the second time we've ever seen Dixie State on the the Sports Center top ten. We'll get it nominated. I can I, I am going to make a prediction. I guarantee that will be number one on the uh, NCAA Division II football top plays of the week next week. We'll get that nominated. And we'll get that taken care of, and we're going to see that highlight over and over again. But that was just guys the exclamation point to the kind of second half it was let's look back at the at this halftime box and then compare to this final box halftime dixie state was was out gaining colorado mesa 230 to 141 but with all the penalties eight penalties for 79 yards against dixie state in the first half and they trailed 21 to 7 how about finishing the game out gaining the mavericks 591 to 285 and you only finish with 11 penalties I shouldn't say only, but that means you only had three penalties in the entire second half. They went in, they made adjustments, 
and you see what happened. I mean, the, the total yardage tells the story of how this game should have played out should, if Dixie State wouldn't have shot itself in the foot in the first half. We're talking about a punt block return for a touchdown. We're talking about a, uh, a tip, uh, drill, a tip drill interception. We're talking about you know, just all sorts of fluky things, penalties, extending Colorado Mesa drives, and, and – and, these final numbers tell the story of really how the game should have been. But Dixie State able to come out and outscore Colorado Mesa 35-11 to in the second half and improve to 4-2 and on the season when trailing at halftime. Yeah, and pretty much in the second half, they played perfect towards the keys. They stopped the run. They forced, as, as Drayson was saying, make Bollinger beat you, and he, and he couldn't. He, you know, less than 50%, uh, you know, or right around or even less than – his, his average on the season completion-wise, just over 100 yards, sacked him four times. I thought they used the safety blitz beautifully in key situations. Great game call by the defensive coordinator uh, for Dixie State. And uh, offensively, you know, Mott, four touchdown passes, threw it really efficiently, only had that one pick that shouldn't have been a pick because it was off the receiver's hand. So he played a, a great game. And it was cool that they brought him in at the end of the game to take a knee on it despite his ankle injury. Dixie State victorious in this one, and, and we've got – a heck of a task on our hands to, to name a SkyWest Airlines player of the game and a Honolulu Grill play of the game. Let's start with SkyWest Airlines player of the game. And, Drayson, I'm going to give you first crack at this. And as we just look down and we look at these individual numbers, uh, Sir Barnes defensively has double-digit tackles for the third time this season. He's got 10 tackles. Um, but offensively, we talked about needing to get the run game going. And C.J. Luongo today, 23 carries, 185 yards and a touchdown, eight yards per carry for him. Um, but Jalen Powell, eight catches, 127 yards and two touchdowns. That's a Dixie State career high for him. But uh, a lot of different things to choose from. I'm going to give you first crack at it. What are, what are you thinking here? Yeah, obviously the numbers stand out to you. Sage Luongo uh, obviously had a, had a huge game, one of his best games as a Trailblazer, uh, certainly in his career, not only this season. Uh, you know, the Trailblazers, I think that was really critical in the first half. The Trailblazers were gaining 329 yards of total yards on the ground. That was huge for them, being able to move the ball consistently on the ground. Obviously, Keaton Mott was great. Jalen Powell was tremendous. He just was kind of that glue guy that, that whenever the Trailblazers needed to pick up a critical third down. He was the guy that they went to. Obviously had the two touchdowns over 125 yards. I think you got to give this one to Sage, though. I think this was his breakout game of the season going for 185 yards and the two touchdowns. I think he was really consistent. I think you could uh, rely on going to him time and time again. There was a few times where he'd only gain a yard or two, but just the the act of being able to continue to move the ball on the ground and continue to get the chains rolling, he was most the most consistent all throughout the game today. And, uh, and, and like I said, no, that's no slight to Jalen Powell at all. I mean, you, I, I like the way you put it. He was kind of their glue guy today And Jalen Powell. It seems like the Dixie State receiving core has had, you know, for one reason or the other, every week a couple of guys that seem to have some drops and, and the ball bouncing off their hands. And Dewan Dantzler has been the guy the last couple of weeks that's been that glue guy. And then today Jalen Powell – uh, was that guy Casey Allison had a great game as well? I should say five catches, 93 yards, and a big touchdown catch in the in the second half. But uh, uh, Jalen Powell gotta recognize him. Eight catches, 127 yards, and two touchdowns. But but Andy, I think I agree with with Drayson and CJ Luongo. We talked about the run game being the key. Yeah. He goes for 185 yards, two two yards off his career best uh, at 187 yards, and he was for me key as the Trailblazers rush for a season high 323 yards today. yeah he rumbled all through the second had a good first half as well but really took it to the next level in the third and fourth quarter to seal the deal for Dixie State made it their drives a lot easier a lot longer uh, time of possession went up when he was back there and uh, you know rushing for 185 yards eight yards a carry today for CJ CJ Luongo is your Skywest Airlines player of the game you know I want to recognize uh, uh, Tanner Hammond as well. He wasn't asked to throw the ball downfield at all today and do these things, but he came in in a situation where he knew exactly what it needed to be, just like last week, and he he managed this game, and, and he helped move Dixie State down the field, and he recognized that free play, knew that he could put the ball up. It didn't matter whether it got caught or not. Put the ball in a spot that his big tight end could go up and get it. So I want to recognize... Um, uh, Tanner Hammond yeah. as well with a, a huge touchdown pass and a big touchdown pa uh, catch for Chase Hess as the Trailblazers win this one, 42-32. Uh, so, Sage Longo, Skywest Airlines player 
of the game. Um, Honolulu Grill play of the game. Um, this is going to be one of those tough ones, guys, where, you know, every there's the play that clearly that interception that we saw at the end of the game uh, is the most electric play of this entire football game. A am I right in assuming that? Yeah. But was there any play bigger in this game than say Jay Luongo's 81 yard touchdown run uh, ready, set, go. Let me know if, and, and if I'm skipping over anything in terms of momentum and keeping Dixie state in front. I don't think so. I mean, that was a pivotal play. The game was still in question. He takes it for 80, 80, what was it? 81, 81, yard, 81 yards. So as far as determining the outcome of the game, you know, if you're weighing that, that play was, it's, it's hard to beat, but then you have the interception that was just like you said, electric that, that sealed the deal. It, that's a tough, that's a tough toss up. The only other one that I'll submit is the uh, Jalen Powell 30-yard pass that as well. Huge. They were down 21-20 at that point. Yes. That gave them the momentum to take the lead. They got the two-point conversion. So in those back-to-back -back plays, Jalen yeah. Powell runs a, a great down. route over the middle of the field, fakes to the sidelines, comes back towards inside the hashes, gets it, and then goes to the end zone untouched. And then, of course, in the next play, they go for two. Jalen Powell grabs that one in the end zone as well. That would be the only other one that I, sw I would submit just because it was such a momentum swinger to give the Trailblazers their first lead of the game. Tough choice. Um, let's go with uh, – we might have to – I mean, I, I, I take the easy way out sometimes, and I like to share things. Uh, uh, why don't we just call it our Honolulu Grill plays of the game tonight? Because I don't know if, if they're – like you guys have mentioned, if there's really any one play. It was a collective effort in the second half. So, clearly, the, the go-ahead touchdown for the first lead to Jalen Powell, Sejay's 81-yard run that – that, you know what, maybe what pushes his over the top is he becomes the career rushing touchdown leader on that 81-yard run. And then, of course, the game ceiling, just incredible. Uh, how do you even – it not, wasn't a tip. It wasn't a tip drill back to your teammate. I mean, it, it was, was caught, caught, caught out, of bounds, out of bounds and thrown, and back, thrown inbound back in before he came down I mean, out I'm, of bounds. I'm trying to think how I'm going to write that in my recap tonight, you guys. And, and it was caught and lateral back into play. And, and JT Anderson, the heads-up play – for him to see that as well. So that we'll, we'll share those plays. Honolulu Grill plays of the game tonight. Guys, Dixie State, 7-2 and two overall, 6-2 uh, and two in the RMAC. Um, and you're getting ready to head to Golden, Colorado. Now everyone can think about it. And you've got you know about a week to set that game plan for the showdown with the ore diggers who, who beat uh, South Dakota Mines today. You're going to take this momentum, and it should be – I'm expecting a great battle on our hands. It's going to be two different – two tremendous offenses. Colorado School of Mines, their defense is incredible this year too. So Dixie State will have to have uh, – they will not be able to make the mistakes that they made in the first half today next week. If they do that, if they're down 21-7 to seven at, at halftime out there, that may just – Mines may run, a, run it, away and hide. It, it, it may just uh, you know double and be more of like a 42-14 to 14 game later but uh, that's why you play the game no one thought that Dixie State could beat Colorado School of Mines last week either or last year either they did and if Dixie State is able to get that win uh, they have an opportunity to get two nine wins what a year uh, the thing that I just keep coming back to is um, four and two when trailing at halftime this season I mean just incredible to be able to go into the locker room and say look guys We've got to do this. I think they're probably feeling like Aaron Simpson expressed to us a couple of weeks, you know, a month or so ago on the show and said, we don't want to have to come back in the second half. But if we need to, we can do it. And they proved it again today, 21-7, to a two-score touchdown. It, they erased that deficit, and they win 42-32. And I think the positive that you take out of that is that the teams that are, that are typically successful, whether it be college or whether it be pro, are the ones that can make adjustments at halftime. We've seen, you know, one of the big names, obviously, is Bill Belichick, who, who in the NFL, the Patriots had a successful run there, and, and obviously that continues. He makes a lot of good adjustments at halftime to be able to negate, um, you know, plays that have been successful for the opposition in the first half. And I think Paul Pearson does a, does a good job of that as well. And the 4-2 and two record... Uh, well, when trailing at halftime is a testament to that. I think he does a good job of recognizing what the other team is trying to do and what his team is lacking and to be able to go into the halftime break to make those adjustments offensively and defensively. And that's obviously another uh, testament to uh, his coaching staff and what they've been able to do. Uh, more evidence of that is the Trailblazers are outscoring opponents now uh, 101 to 21 coming into this game. Obviously, that number is bigger now because they had a, a few touchdowns there in the third quarter. Great adjustments were made at halftime, and I think that's the key to that 4-2 record while trailing at halftime. 
Just the second time all season that Dixie State has finished with more rushing yards than passing yards, and that's exactly what they needed today, and they'll have to duplicate this feat next week. The Trailblazers go for 591 yards of total offense and is second this season. They had 677 against Black Hill State a couple of weeks ago. That'll do it for us today as the Trailblazers win it 42-32 in comeback fashion. This has been your Jimmy John's postgame report. I want to thank all of our sponsors. I want to thank CEC TV for the excellent job that they do on the TV and Internet side. We thank Ken, our radio producer, back in the 97.7 FM studio. Andy, thanks for coming to hang out with us today. Always a pleasure to have you here. Great game. Fun to be here. And uh, the Trailblazers win it 42 42- 32. For Drayson Ball and Andy Thompson, I'm Carrick Segmiller. Thank you for listening and watching. We'll catch you next week. Drayson and I will be on the call in Golden, Colorado, uh, over on uh, Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. And then uh, in two weeks, we'll be right here to wrap things up in the regular season against Adams State. It'll be senior day, and you're sending guys like C.J. Luongo and, and guys like that out. So you want to be here, C.J. Luongo, Alex Lilliard, Dewan Dantzler. I, I'm missing – those are like the four-year guys that Dixie State has had that decided to, to stay here even with a coaching change and stick it out and uh, come and send them out in style two weeks from today. Thanks for listening, everybody. I'm Carrick Segmiller. Have a great day.